All right, so I don't think that I wanted to start like this because I feel like you're going to joke my excitement. Okay. But I'm going to start like this anyway. Okay. Um, if you're watching, if you're listening, you're not going to understand, so I have to explain it to you. Um, I'm very excited because my hair is out, right? I've straightened my hair, and it's getting towards the end. I'm about to rewash it, whatever, straight. And I have these two pieces in the front of my hair, and they're like the two, you know, just the two little pieces that you have in the front, and then like... You have a bun or a ponytail or something like that. I've always wanted these two pieces to be long enough to do the two pieces in the front because my hair would always be short. But now I have the two pieces and I'm excited about it, but I don't think it's in, it's like in style anymore. I'm pretty sure it's not. So I don't know what to do, but I'm wearing them anyway. That's like white girl late 90s. So that's the thing. Like Early 2000s. I, I know that it's not cool. Mm-mm. But I've always wanted the two little pieces in the front that just kind of hang in the face. And then you do the slick back ponytail and like I have it now. So like I feel excited, but I also feel whack as fuck. But that's on brand for me. Sounds good. Because this is about 2000. 2000? Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say no and just 2000. Like 90 something 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's okay, cause it's you know Is what it? I'm confident because it's my real hair, and it's a goal that I've wanted to achieve for a long time. But like, where did this goal start? When I so you, well, when I was younger, I was obsessed with Aaliyah, so I would wear the swoop, and like men know when they they knew like if you were of a certain age, you all the girls was wearing the swoop. Did you have the bumps on your forehead? So I I had a couple, not a lot. No, I wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't crazy. Because I realized uh, it's the early oil. on, the, yeah. the oil from the swoop was a the swoop was deadly mm -hmm. for skincare. Mm -hmm. Like we wasn't really doing skincare regimens then right. when it was out like they do now. Right. But like the swoop with all the oil sheen in it was uh was oh my god! If you pulled that swoop back, that yeah, forehead was listen, insane, terrible. Um. But I was a swoop girl, so I had the I had the Aaliyah swoop at all times. Mm -hmm. But it was thin because that's when I was getting perms, relaxers, and shit. Mm. So everybody knows a girl they went to school with that had a thin swoop. It wasn't just me because I know how you like to just make it seem like I'm just the worst no, no, part no, no, of no, every no, era. No, 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 no. Listen, I I knew a lot of girls, but I don't know any now. And you definitely had a swoop earlier this week. No, I had it in a ponytail. I'm trying to relive my. High school years. Is this what middle it, age is for a only, woman? It's only, it's hair. It's just hair. I'm not trying to like do all the rest of the high school things, but like I had hair expectations then when I didn't know how to care for my hair. So now I'm, I'm wearing the two pieces. I'm wearing the swoop. I'm doing all the things that I saw all the other girls do. Mm, 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 Cause you couldn't do it back then. No. Cause you was bald headed. I don't, I wasn't bald headed. Mm. I, w I had thin hair. I had a thin swoop because mm -hmm. I had a relaxer, but all the girls had a thin swoop, so we thought that that was healthy. As long as your <laughs> hair was long, we was like, oh, it's healthy. It's good hair. But, like, we oh. was we was fucked up back then. I don't know what we thought we was doing. Damn, son. I know you don't really care about this. Not at all. But I, I am excited. I'm starting the episode a little confident. Okay, that's what it is. Yeah. I'm I am unexcited and I am a little nervous right now. Why? So Why? um because today is picture day for the boys, man. Yeah. And um I was just thinking about all of my picture days mm -hmm. and how they never turned out the way I wanted them to. Mm -hmm. And I'm not I'm not like afraid for both of them. It's only one of the twins. Like one of the twins, he's just naturally like photogenic. Gorgeous. Like he he I'm gonna say he's gorgeous. They're both they're both they're both extremely handsome. Extremely is a but push. one of them makes he he I think he believes he's a model. He I and I think that's what it is, man. He's very serious. Like his face, he plays a lot, but his face is like if it's go mode, like this morning. When it's time for pictures. Yeah, this morning I was like, yo. Let me see your picture for when you take your pictures. And the second he did it, it was like, oh, oh. Yeah, he was ready. Oh, my gosh. Other one other one was looking really weird. He was just like, eh, meh, meh, meh. Eyes was all wide and big. I'm I, like, nah, son, you're going to scare somebody. I don't know if that sound translates to a to a face. Ran, ran, but no, imagine not at all. somebody going, eh, meh, meh, what their face looks like. <laughs> That's what he was doing with his smile. I'm but like, yeah, oh my I'm super nervous for one of them, man, because I'm just like, yo, these last forever. Like school pictures, 
are those pictures that are pulled out when you're an adult. You know, the thing about being a twin is when you get older and people point out that picture, you can always say it was your brother. Nah, if son. If it's the picture that's like a mess, you could be like, well, that was that was him. You know what? The times that they look different is on picture day. They never look the same on picture day. But They look completely but, different. You know, but the thing with us, like we know who the kids are, but a lot of people can't tell our kids apart, which is weird to me because I think they look different. But I think that's more of a name thing. Like, I know that y'all both have similar faces, mm -hmm. so I can't place what name goes with the face. No. More so than you guys look exactly alike. Like, I'm sure it, if you look at them, it's like, oh, no, there's differences. There are. But I can't, it's not that much of a difference to where I can say this name goes with that nose. You know what I'm saying? I think, I think the other people beg to differ. I think that there are people that think that they can't tell who is who. Okay. So I think when you get older, there are a lot of pictures when they were babies where I'm like, I have no idea. Oh yeah, who that well is. yeah, yeah, that's true. That's I don't true. know. But what child most is. babies look the same, man. It's like ten different baby faces. But when they were, when I was in the moment with them, I could tell who was who. I knew who was who. Yeah, yeah. in the moment, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. They looked different then. They also act completely different. They do. They do act different. Yeah. They even as a baby, they were acting mm -hmm. completely different. Yeah. So, but yeah, so. I'm a little nervous. I'm hoping that picture day goes well. I'm hoping that they took off their hoodies. Mm -mm. I'm hoping that they smiled. No. I'm hoping that they didn't smile too hard, Cameron. No. Like, I'm, no. I'm just really... Nah, because if they come back with a terrible picture, that's a reflection on them and not me. And how I'm many, not taking that in. How many bad picture days did you have, you think, I don't during think your I, school years? I don't think I had... You don't say that because I've seen some. You got to slow down, okay? You've no, seen I, one picture. It, so, like I said, you I've cannot I've only say. had a couple. I think that I've had, oh, my gosh, fourth grade, I had this picture where everything was so cute. My hair was laid right. My shirt was cute. Everything was cute, but my eyes for some reason. <laughs> my eyes were wide as a bitch, and I think that when they said go, I think my eyes popped. Oh, I was so mad because, I mean, my hair was like, it was laid, and Man. my eyes were like, what the fuck is this? That's Damn. the only thing. But now they're starting to like, they add teeth in photos. Yeah, they do. Which they is do. crazy it's to like me. It's like DMV. They, they trying to, you know, up No, down. it's not DMV. They they edit shit where they add stuff to it. Wait, what you mean? Like, I saw a picture online at some point where I guess the kid took the picture with no smile. Mm -hmm. But then when they got the edited picture back, it had a smile on it. Oh, wow. That AI is wild. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't. I, yeah. I, I mean, I think it's unfair because I think we were authentic. And if we just had a bad picture, we had to live with that shit. I guess, man. I, you know, picture day scares me, I think, because I remember when it all went to shit. It was third grade. What happened? That was when, like, the weight gain started. In third grade? Third grade. That's when I went from you a regular size kid to you a little bigger than some of the kids. That's okay. I mean, yeah, I think all the kids were just... It sent me on a dark path, man. In third grade? Third grade, man. From there, I was fat boy. Oh, they called you fat boy. Well, my uncle called me fat boy. But, you know, the point is... It wasn't... That's well. I mean, I could see how that would affect. Yeah, children. yeah, and it and it and it just lasts in every school picture after that until maybe my eleventh or twelfth grade year mm -hmm. um, was terrible, mm. fucking terrible, man. Mm. So I, I'm just hoping that they have good pictures. No, I just think that if they have bad p pictures, that is something that, that builds character, I think. Because when I went through school with a bad picture, like, there are mad people that have yearbooks with that picture in it. Oh, that's fucked up. And that's when they go back you. and they show somebody and they're looking at their class, or maybe one day I'll get famous. Maybe something will happen and they'll be like, I went to school with her. Who the fuck still has their... Yearbooks? Yeah. Oh, I know a couple of people. From, like, elementary school? My friend Amy has her middle school one. Really? She has the middle school one when we all went to school together. So, I because I was asking people, like, who had their yearbooks still, because I wanted mm -hmm. to look at something. And she was like, I think she had, like, sixth grade or something like that. And I was like, oh, I, I want that one. I want to see it. Wow. Yeah. That's and then wild. another friend of mine, she got the high school one, because I lost mine. I think it's at my parents' house. But I wanted to look through that one, too. But when someone goes back and they're like, or 
when they have like little news stories or something. You what, know, if what, I, what are you gonna be on my, the news for? In, in my in my mind, I'm gonna be famous one day. Oh, okay, my bad. So if that happens, and like you know, when the narrator goes on and they like you know coming up, she was a da 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 da, and then they flash your high school photo, and then it pans to an interview with somebody you went to school. You with. want my, somebody to say, "God damn!" No, then they pan to the interview with somebody you went to school with, and they were like, yeah, she was always, you know? She was always with that Aaliyah swoop. I could direct a documentary if I wanted to. Could you? Yeah. All I right. think that's how it goes. Um, <laughs> so, like, I, I can see all of those things happening, and I got to live with that picture. Like, my senior picture, mm -hmm. that swoop was at its thinnest. <laughs> and I veiled that little the strings of hair right across my oh, eye. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Them little five strings of swoop veiled across my eye. Over there trying to it. save the swoop. They was like blinds just right through my swoop. I thought I was a Leah too. I was like, yes, look at that. It's good. That's weird. Yeah. And then I got most likely to be famous. So that picture also had a thin swoop. And That's I, the one they're going to use too. I know. And my outfit was ugly. <laughs> I had on these black K Swiss, but everybody was wearing K Swiss. Don't fucking do Who that. the fuck was wearing K-Swiss? Excuse me. At, at, there was a period in time where all the girls had the black K-Swiss or the white K-Swiss. So you were in, this was like in 2006? 2005, 2006? 2004, 2005. Okay. Yeah. So they they were wearing, the um, and you know what? I could be getting my years confused. But no, in that picture, I had the black K-Swiss and other people did too. But... Um, there was also a point where the girls was wearing the what were they Missy or whatever the uh, the clear shoes, the Chinese the jellies slippers. No, the jelly sneakers. It was uh, that was a short period of time. Uh. Or did I had on DK and y? I might have had on DK and Wise. You on had picture. all the uh, DK and Wise was fire. I didn't, I didn't say that, but never mind. I went to wait the, wait DK and Y in what year? Sneakers in what year? Um, um, I don't remember what year that was. It definitely wasn't in the 2000s. That might have been middle school. Yeah. Or but late, maybe elementary late, school. No, 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 no. It was middle school, maybe like late middle school, high school. Wow. Something like that. No, son. Yeah, it was. In 2000s? Yeah. yeah. DKNY? What's wrong with you? What's wrong with you? They did. No. When they started fading off, but like I knew this one girl, she had on she had all the DKNY sneakers. Mm -hmm. All of them. And then my cousin... That's because them shits was $15. My, no, they weren't. And my cousin handed me down some, and I wore them with every outfit. Oh, my God. I wore them all the time. They were, like, red or burgundy and, Getting like, dark blue or something handed down like that. DKNY in the 2000s. But she had all the sneakers. Nasty, she man. had all the sneakers, and she had these one pair of DKNY sneakers, and I was like, I need those. I knew what sneakers were because a lot of my... I had a lot of cousins that were sneakerheads. And right. at the time... I couldn't afford to be a sneakerhead. But, right. like, all my cousins had the cool parents that was like... And my parents, I mean, they was cool. But they wasn't, like, the cool parents. Right. They weren't, like... You know what I mean? Like, oh, they always fly. No, I get it. I get it. So, they... Um, all of them had all the sneakers. Their parents had all the sneakers. It was like that. Mm -hmm. So, I was like, okay, cool, cool. Like, one day. And then I started getting a couple of sneakers from her. Because she would always... We started wearing the same size. She would always hand me down her sneakers. And I was like, oh, shit. Which was crazy because as I got older and start acquiring my own sneaker collection, I started giving her my sneakers. Wow. And she was so excited to get them. I'm still stuck on DKNY in the 2000s. That was my older cousin, too. That was crazy. My gosh. Baby, well, if you wasn't fly, just say that. The fuck? No. Nobody was. Okay. You okay? Can you calm the fuck down? I'm good. I'm good. Damn. I'm good. You had Parasugos? Parasugo boots? My cousin did. Uh, no, he had Durango's with Parasugo jeans. Uh, did I have them? No, I thought they were ugly. I thought Parasucos were ugly. What I thought were you Durango wearing though? Were what ugly. were you wearing that you was like, this is fly? Tell me. I was I was rock aware Sean John out. He was in New York. Some of the time, and some when I came down here, I was still rock aware. Yeah, Sean I, well, John out. Did you have you didn't have no Wu wear? Nah, I wasn't in the I wasn't into Wu Tang. Okay, that's fine. Did you have an Avrax coat? Yes. Did you have like a basketball team coat? No, I didn't. I didn't watch sports back then. Oh yeah, I had a Celtics coat. I had a fitted collection. All right, so I I know what you want to say out of your mouth, and I want you to shut the fuck up. Already. I didn't say anything. I know what you wanted to say, but I I used to wear like 
you know, my swoop, my hair down, and like different fitteds that went with different outfits. So I had a Denver Nuggets one. Nigga thought she I was had, fabulous. Uh, <laughs> <Celtics> <laughs> one. I had, back, Shungin. I had so many fitteds. I would just go to the store and buy fitteds and like always wear fitteds all the time. Wow. With my hair down, like, cause I was, I thought I was like trying to be like Aaliyah, kind of thing. Aaliyah dead by then. Baby, I I knew Aaliyah from the ground up. Uh uh-uh. uh, no, 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 absolutely not. Shut the fuck up. What's wrong with you today? I didn't say anything. You, but you've said so much already <laughs> in these fifteen <laughs> minutes that we've been recording without saying anything. Stop. Don't do that. <laughs> I didn't even mean it like that. I was trying to be just, I'm just telling you, like, I loved her. So I would wear that kind of stuff. I'd wear, you know, a bandana tied around my hair with my hair out. I wore all of those things. Wow. Yeah. I'm glad we have you now. Are you? Yeah. Because I feel like I'm reverting back with these two little pieces. No, <laughs> God damn it. No. <laughs> Uh, it's J Rod. And then we the pod, the fastest growing pod in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Really? Yeah, man. They don't get no horn? That don't even feel accurate. No, because I'm here and I don't feel that love. <laughs> <laughs> That's some bullshit. <laughs> I was just stopped in the grocery store and the lady said, I see you trying to be low and incognito. Your wife be coming in here too. Da 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 da. What grocery store? Um, up the block. Oh, was, did she have dreads? Yeah. Oh, shout out to her. I saw her one time, and I think I may have been turned around. Yeah, she she said you was trying to hide. I be trying to hide. Yeah, man. Well, because, you know, I'm weird. So, like, once I know that somebody notices me one time, I'm like, I got to interact, because I got to go to that grocery store. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I, I have to learn her schedule so I don't show up. And it's not. <laughs> it has nothing to do with her. She was perfectly nice and all that other stuff, but I am weird. Yeah, you are. I get I get cringy when people notice me or say that doesn't mean don't say hi. I can say hi to people, but like it just feels weird. Like the um, where was that? The Family Dollar, Dollar General that I go in, mm-hmm. and then the girl at the register noticed who I was, and I was a bum. I had on a hoodie. <laughs> I looked a fucking mess. Like the hood was over my head, but I wasn't trying to hide. I was just comfortable. I'm a bum on regular days, <laughs> and she noticed me, and I've been needing something from Family Dollar ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I went to like a farther one. <laughs> I was like, I can't go in there right now. <laughs> can't risk it. It's too hot. I can't go. Wow, so, that is sad. Yeah, didn't I tell you? Um, what happened? I went to. Did I? I don't know if I said it on the podcast, but I went to uh, Chick Fil A. I went to Chick Fil A, and this girl was like, "Oh, you that lady?" I was in drive thru and I was like. <gasps> What lady? She was like, you that lady, her and her husband be doing stuff. That's funny. You that lady, her and her husband, like you not right there. Yeah. And I was and I was like, oh, okay, yeah. But all I could think of was like, she called me that lady. <laughs> like, I didn't know I was old enough to be that lady. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was, you that girl. You no, that chick. You ain't been that girl or chick in a long but time. But I baby. don't, I feel like I'm that that girl. Who's that lady? Yeah, I do. Like, that's a whole different song. And that song is older. <laughs> that song is older than the eat. That's crazy. You see, you see the difference? When you hear who's that girl? Nah, that's that got a little bop to yeah. it. And it is who's that lady? <laughs> that thing old as hell. Yo, lady do age you, man. It's that sweet lady. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he was talking about an older woman she's in that at song. Least, she's got to be over 30, Yeah, 35. Listen, listen, you are 30-something. I couldn't believe. I felt disrespect. I almost wanted to get mad at that girl. Like, what lady? <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess I'm that lady. That, it's all good, though. I, I like your lady ass. I mean, I'm I'm happy to be you know, lady? at that lady age, but I don't want you to point that out. Don't say lady. <laughs> so it goes from girl to chick to lady. What's after lady? Uh, woman. Woman. <laughs> you, you that, that woman. woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's my woman. <laughs> That's what you start. <laughs> That's my woman. <laughs> I told you, like, I have no, I have no idea of, like, time. Because even when the Netflix and the Hulu changed to say mom, I'm like, oh, this must be my mother's Netflix account. <laughs> But I forgot I was mom. I'm yeah. like, how dare you? 
like every time I log in, I'm looking for it to say Kristen, and it never it says mom, and yeah. I gotta log in, and I'm like, yeah, I gotta. It feels weird, man. I, I know that is me. I just watch. Think about how I felt. I just watch Love Is Blind. That's me. I gotta continue watching that as a mom. I am mom. <laughs> uh, thanks to Babbel for supporting our show. Babbel is the science-backed language learning app that actually works. Here's a special holiday deal for our listeners. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash ATW. Rules and restrictions may apply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Let's get into my favorite part of the show, man. Ooh. Bitches love this. But should we play that right after <laughs> we do an ad? <laughs> Maybe I've maybe I've wasted time. No, no, I didn't waste any time in between. I was like, maybe I. It's just you know, something to think about. You're right. That's fine. You can add it. Maybe you can edit um some space in between. That. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking. I was like, wait a minute. Huh. Um, it's fine. It's yeah, fine. Don't yeah, worry about listen, it. Listen, I, yeah. I I get you. It's nobody else's concern but ours. Yeah. Listen, I understand. Yeah. You see it. Okay. If y'all hear another Babel ad in a couple of weeks, yeah. it's because of this one. Yeah. Oh. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> so listen, I was watching, I was looking, I was reading, okay, watching, looking, reading. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article yesterday mm -hmm. um, about Al Pacino, and he- uh, I never thought we was going to say Al Pacino's name on this part. <laughs> mm -hmm. You do what you're fucking told. Man. That's my Al Pacino. Thank you. That's- That was terrible. You got a friend that does- I know. It, right. and, and that makes me feel even Does worse. it feel weird when you have a friend that does impressions, and you like, let me- I got to give you the gist of the joke. Yo, you Because regular people tell stories, and they'll be like, you know, Mickey Mouse was like- meh, 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 meh. But like, when you do that, it's like, ew, this is weird. Yo, I'm going to tell you. I used to think I was really good at voices until I met this motherfucker. Wait, what? I thought I was good at voices. I didn't think I was like an impressionist or nothing like that. But I'm like, oh, yeah, I do. I do a couple of voices. You ever, you ever, you ever did voices around him? Not at all. You don't Maybe try to once. Do Maybe once. Did he try to judge you? No, he did. He was so nice about it. He was probably like, oh, look at that. I, he said, I got it. Wait, were you telling a story and he wanted to complete your no, story by doing the no. impression? Because that's oh. insane. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. I'm telling you a story. It's like, ah, don't worry about it. Nah, uh, we were we were working on something and it called for Rick Ross. And I saw that I, in my mind, I was like, I mean, I know he the king, but nigga, I got a Rick Ross. And I started doing it. He was like, I, I, I got it, Jay. Can I hear your Rick Ross? Huh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I love lemon pepper wings. They're the best. Khaled. Baby. With my win. Mm -hmm. And that's why you don't get paid the same money. <laughs> <laughs> that is why. My. <laughs> but I thought I did because in my ear, in my head, that shit sounds great. No, it does sound it sounds cool. It sounds like it, right? Yeah. <gasps> Say, I'm I'm the biggest boss that you... I'm the biggest boss, Ricky Ross. Ricky Rose. All right. That I like that one. Really? I like that last one. Hey, I'm killing it. It's all right. I'm killing it. All right. I'm gonna clip it up and I'm gonna send it to Jay. <laughs> hey, can you listen to this real quick? I got him, I got a DMX. I got I got a couple. You got a DMX? Hell yeah. Let me hear the DMX. Yo, dog. No, say something else. Hey, yo, my niggas. That's not bad. It's not a bad, it's not a bad DMX. I feel like it's a good DMX. It's, a, it's okay. It's, yeah. Yeah. That's, a, can you say more? Yo, more. Wait, what you want me to say? I was trying to, never mind. Oh. Don't worry. I about love it. Kraft macaroni and cheese. All right, I think it's the longer that you say it, you lose the, lose it. but lose when it. you say the short phrases, you hit those. They're good because you just because I love my niggas. The love. I love the love one. The love, love was good. Yeah. It's yeah. the I. I didn't believe that one. Ah. 
All right, I don't yeah, want to do this anymore. Yeah, I think it's. All right, I got. I got a couple. I yeah, got a couple, all right. man. don't don't tell me that no more. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna ask you to say some more. <laughs> um. Anyway, I was looking at this article with Al Pacino, and he was talking about when he had COVID, and during his time with COVID, he actually um he died for like two three minutes, mm -hmm. and he said when he came back, he found out that there was nothing like he said the white light all of that shit that people be talking about is not real he doesn't believe that there's anything after death well maybe he wasn't there long enough maybe it's like a walk like you gotta you gotta get there maybe i don't know maybe it's not immediately on the other side as a, a path I, <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> you got the hey. path to righteousness hey i was gonna say hey, it hey yeah you know i mean i went to church for a couple of days come I'm on telling baby you. and they work look hey, look hey. how he got to you <laughs> hey. but i started thinking well the first thought was mm, that nigga was probably in hell but then after mm, that <laughs> that's a good question that's a good answer but after that i was like man i wonder how heaven is though like such a morbid uh i don't think it's morbid though like we all gonna die at some point here's the problem with this is mm. i'm gonna answer this top six mm. but i'm gonna feel real bad after it no you're not because some of my ideas about heaven are not gonna be what we're supposed to be saying well these are the top six ideas that we have about heaven okay now okay. i remember when uh, I think it was Mr. Pock that said, I wonder, Mr. I wonder if heaven got a ghetto. Ooh. Oh, miss. I wonder, wait, that wasn't Pock. No. Who was, who was heaven had a ghetto? Don't worry about it. I'm, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you, baby, baby. Ooh. I used to love that song. Damn. Y'all tell me in the comments who that song uh, was. Nope. <laughs> but I thought about that. I thought I about. I think it is Tupac if we're being honest. Uh, it might be. I can't remember. My brain is all over the place because I'm trying to find my answers. But okay. I think it is too. But hot. yeah, so I thought about that song. I thought about Biggie and everything. I don't want to be in heaven with all the goody goodies. You know what I mean? Um, and then I was like, but heaven's supposed to be this place for you. It's supposed to be like, you know, your heaven. Sure. Yeah. I don't know what the Bible says about I don't know either. Like, ownership that, of heaven. Yeah, I, I don't I don't know. But in my mind, heaven is This is gonna go down a dark path. No, nah, I don't think so. I, in my mind, heaven is the place that you want it to be. Okay? You did good on earth. Now you go to heaven and it be what you want it to be. And it be yeah. Yeah. Heaven, so they got good English. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But your English is the best English. Okay. You're up right. in heaven. You're right. Go there ahead. we go. So these are the top six ideas. We have about heaven. You want to start? You want to, uh, you want I'm to a, start? I'm going to start with something simple. Okay. Um, Number six. Uh, all the laundry folds itself in heaven. I believe that. And the only thing that made me think about this was I just went in our laundry room and the kids threw the laundry everywhere. And I just kept thinking about how overwhelmed I was that it wasn't done. And I just believe that there's a place where I don't have to worry about none of this mess. You know, there's a coin laundromat up there that will fold you. No, they don't fold your stuff. Yeah, you got to fold your own stuff. Nah, there's, I, you don't know about this one. There's one up there that... Yeah. Where is that top stuff. secret laundromat? It's on uh on the on the boulevard. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I might have to take them in there then. The kids are <laughs> going there. But that's where I believe that there's dollars. one with a little less stress on me. Where they the, you just take the laundry out and just or maybe you don't have to wash it, but in in my heaven, I'm I'm using Downy. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> or Tide or whatever, you know. Yeah, you gotta use Tide. Yeah. You know, I hate um Going to people's houses and you got to wash clothes and you look at their the, the, the laundry detergent, laundry is detergent and it's trash. Yeah, it's not your choice. Yeah, man. It's like, this is mostly water. I saw the commercial. Mm -hmm. The commercial says it's water? Yeah, because, you know, any commercial, any Tide commercial always shows you how everybody else's shit is mostly water mm -hmm. and a little bit of soap. But oh, the Tide yeah, is yeah. wrong. Yeah, so. there you go. Yeah. yeah, I like that. Yeah, man. So I, I just be feeling, you know, I be judging. Mm -hmm. I'll be judging a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, but yeah, okay. Folding laundry. Yeah, I like that. Start these, are the, slow. these are the top six ideas I have about heaven. Number five. Um, women encourage you to spend more time playing games. Video games, to be exact. 
I think that in heaven, there's no such thing as you always own the game. Why can't women play the game too, though? Y'all can. Y'all choose not to. Not all of There are gamers. There are they, no, gamers. There, there, there are, uh, and, and these are the blessed of the women that play games and are in that shit. I'm talking about gamers that are way better than me. You know what I mean? Like they are in that shit. And then there are people that you probably Whoop you know. you in Mortal Kombat. You cannot beat me in Mortal Kombat. You keep Kombat. doing this. You keep saying that, and that's crazy. You can't beat me Maybe in Mortal Kombat. I literally, I literally you can't beat me in you. Tekken. I you can't beat me in Phase 10. You, whoa, let's, you are wild. Let's, let's I'll be real. I never beat you. Okay, baby. And no, let, let, no, and I hate when people do that. I never beat you before. Don't worry about Man, it. Yeah, you got a Don't win or two. It. Baby, it won't no win or two. Don't do that to me. You want, you beat me four times. Baby, I've beat you a couple of times. Four. You keep playing. You don't ever want to play when I want to play. I counted four. You never want to play when I want to play. Don't worry about it. <laughs> never want to play when you tired. No, nah, never. Don't worry about it. You <laughs> never want to play when I want to play. Don't worry about it. Man, these are the top six ideas I have about heaven. Number four. Never ending cookouts. I don't know what it is about a cookout, but every, it just makes me feel good. Like there's always Frankie Beverly. He didn't already went up there to to set up the band. Okay. To, uh, to bring the band together and to curate the sound. You know, he probably met up with Prince and was like, yo, what's up? We gonna do this or not? And he was like, I was just waiting on you. So now, from then <laughs> on out, never ending cookouts. Just good music, good food, fellowship, dancing, card games, everything. Everybody just chilling and having a good time. Aww. Never Ending cookout. You feel bad that you didn't get a cookout this summer, did you? I'm really upset, actually. Yeah. I'm I'm still I'm gonna do a cook in. I'm gonna do something. A cook in. <laughs> I'm gonna do something. You do that shit every fucking day. I know, but I'm gonna do I'm well, I'm gonna do cookout few food. <sighs> Maybe get an indoor fire pit. You know, Snoop sells those. He does. Yeah. So, he does. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Never in the cookouts. That's a trash thing to think about heaven. But That's my heaven. We talk about every. You're right. Everybody. You're right. It's, my bad. It's accustomed to. My bad. Or custom. My bad, you know man. The word. Uh, <clears throat> these are the top six ideas I have about heaven. Uh, number three, you're always on time, no matter what time you get there. That's good, especially for people like me. Listen. That's good. Listen, That's you ain't got to worry about, oh my gosh, I'm late. That's you're good. not late, baby. You want on time. When That's you get good. there That's an hour good. later, yeah. you want time. It's good. That's good. For this, this is a black heaven, by the way. But, you know, you're yeah. always on time. Mm -hmm. I like that one. Yeah. I think that's a good one. Hey, man. These are the top six ideas I have about heaven. Number two. This is where it goes downhill. All right. Right on, right on number two. Mm. Um, I think in heaven, all dicks are the same size. That's what I think. I think every dick... <laughs> Is the same size dick, so can't nobody try to punk nobody and be like, my dick bigger than yours, because it's not. They all the same size dick. They all they just having a good time. They hanging out, you know, they being used for what they being used for. It's just like when you go into school and kids start wearing uniforms. You can't joke nobody about the uniforms. You can't say nothing about what clothes they got on. I got better clothes than you. I got no, we all on even playing field. All the dicks are the same dicks. See, here's the only thing, my only problem with what you just said. What? I don't go around saying, hey, I got a bigger dick than you. No, but it's... We don't be beefing. But there are people that are like, well, I got, you know, I, I, my man's dick is bigger than your man's dick. See, and and, and, and that's why I wanted you to get to. Or I this is a with woman's this, argument. I mess with this man, this man. This man? And, <laughs> or this is actually for y'all. This is empowerment for y'all. Because nobody can be like, shut up, you little dick nigga. Because no, it's not. Everybody got the same. Find it ain't, something it else. ain't little if everybody got the same Find size. Find something else to talk about. Shut up with your thick eyebrows. Okay, I have those. My bad. You, you coming at me? Well, I don't have them. But I love yours. <laughs> I love yours. You know I love them. Don't do that. But like they gotta find something else to talk about. Dix is always the one that trumps everything else. Where they like, oh, you he got a little dick, you little dick, because some men are hurt by that. But like, hey, no, no, what is it? My personality sucks, probably. And you're saying everybody has the same size. At everybody, yeah. We what start, size is that? I don't. I don't know. It's a better answer than that, baby. I'm your husband. Your what size. size oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm Yep. Yes, uh, that's perfect. Perfect size, dude. <laughs> <laughs> perfect 
heaven dick right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. These are the top six ideas I have about heaven. We're at number one now. And I'm going to stay in your Yeah, because we going realm. to hell for, on this on yeah. the end. Uh, <clears throat> number one, did you come mm-hmm. is not a question. Oh. Uh, Everybody come. Everybody. One for you. Everybody. You get a nut. You get a nut. You Give get them a out. Nut. Everybody gets a Give nut. Give them out in my heaven. Okay? Pew, 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 pew. That's the nut you now. They all sound like, you know, pew, 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 pew. That sound like it hurt. You think so? Yeah. Sound like a hard nut? Like it's real hard? It, pew. That's what I hear. Oh, why? Is, where is it going? Your face. Oh, that's crazy. That's I'm looking crazy. out for you. If you if you hit me with something that got like force, <laughs> then I'm just gonna think you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> like wow, pew! Oh my god, I got a bruise on my cheek <laughs> from you having such a good time. Yeah, man. But everybody should be able to come. I'm I'm so tired of reading all of these articles where women are just talking about how they never get their nut. And you know, I, I'm feeling I, I feel for y'all. Mm-hmm. You know, or a guy that says I had to fake a nut because she just wasn't doing it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, I feel for y'all, mm-hmm. man. So yeah. in my heaven, everybody get one. Everybody. So are you giving out all the nuts? I mean, it's my heaven. Oh God. Okay. What's the matter with that? Nothing. It's fine. It's my fine. Heaven. You you think you think it's called cheating in heaven? No, it, I think it it's called love. Prospering? It's called love. Love, yeah, love. yeah. That's what I think. Yeah, love. That's what I think. Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. even know if we can use the word love anymore. Why? I don't know. I just got a negative connotation to it now. Stop doing that. I can't do the heart. I'm so glad people cannot hear, like, see what you're what? doing. I'm if doing they're the listening heart. I love the heart, man. If you're watching on video, <laughs> then he's going, he's, yeah. These were the top six ideas I have about heaven. We have about heaven. If you have an idea about heaven, about your specific heaven, Ooh. let us know in the comments, it's man. Be bad. What do you mean it's going to be bad? No, it's all right. It's going to be bad. <laughs> it's a bad we having a time. Oh, man. Let's get into the question of the day. Uh, I went I went lighthearted this, this week, man. I know. Went lighthearted. Yeah, I see. You know, um, question of the day. What's a little thing that makes you the happiest? Um, All of my family in the same room. I'm not saying that's to be for like a long period of time. But like holidays or if all of us and the kids are watching TV or something like that, I love that. I, it makes me feel good. It makes me feel, I don't know. But that's a that's a little thing when, because the especially the big kids are always in their room. So if we are downstairs when it's time for everybody to come eat dinner and then everybody has to come downstairs and eat dinner, like I love that. Mm. That's my favorite part of the day. Mm. And then getting in my bed is also the favorite. My bed. Can I change my answer? My bed. <laughs> <laughs> my bed makes me the happiest. I love being in my bed, laying down, just watching what I got to watch before my. I'm about to go to sleep. I light my candle beside the bed every night, and I just kind of sit in it, and I watch TV. Mm. Let the TV kind of watch me. Turn it, Like that little period of time, that little couple of hours. Ooh. If it makes it to a couple of hours, I'm so happy. My favorite part of the day. Wow. Yeah. What about you? My nuts. Okay. I know yeah. it. I know. Like getting a nut is <sighs> that little thing that makes that. me like. I knew it was that. You know. It's never anything sentimental. It, it No, it, that's mad. You ever cried after a nut? Mm-hmm. That's sentimental. I almost cried last night. Why'd you almost cry last night? Because we had sex last night. Don't talk to me like you wasn't there. No, and I'm just saying, what made you almost cry? I don't, it was a really good nut. I felt it from like my lower back. I felt it like it was, I don't know, it was in my uterus. I felt it. I felt it. Like I know back I should. And I uterus, should. I, yeah, I felt it because it was like a double nut. It wasn't just a clitoral nut. It was inside. Mm-hmm. It was orgasm. It was body. You know the, the problem with this? You didn't feel that? No, no, no. Not, nothing like that. Um, Like this testimony mm-hmm. would be great if I could get more off of it. But I'm just getting this testimony. It's just for me. 
and I appreciate that. What do you that. mean if you could get more off of it? Like, okay, let's say I was single and you said that about the nut that, you know, we had together. You would walk away being like, hell yeah. Did you hear did what that. she said? Yeah. Yeah. And that would beget more. I you mean, know. you don't want to feel confident about what you did? No, I, w- I was confident when I was in it. You want rave reviews. You want your dick on Yelp. <laughs> That's what you want? Is that what you want? Yelpy dick. You want a Yelp dick. Uh, yeah. You know they had like a, a, a dick Yelp thing? Did they? Or something like that. It was on Twitter or something like that. No, I didn't know that. Well, I saw it on Twitter. It might not just be on Twitter. But yeah, maybe that's what you wanted. Maybe. Maybe. All right. Well, fuck it. It was terrible. No. D- <laughs> All right, if you don't care about it, then it was uh, terrible. No, no. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad you enjoyed yourself, man. I definitely enjoyed myself. I know you did. You saying that because... I saw it. You know, I'm going to go back to that moment. Hmm. I wanted to make so much noise last night. I know. Don't you hate having kids though for real? Oh my like, gosh. It's, it so there's a couple of things. Just our door is like close to all the kids' doors. And like one door specifically, like it you can hear almost everything. Like the walls are kind of thin. Yeah. And I knew that it was about to get to that time because then you wanted to start knocking the headboard I was like you gotta chill out you can't do that because they hear everything when it starts sounding like a pattern they're gonna be like it's some shit going down right um, but then I could feel your body you was like that's what you sound like and you better shut, shut up shut up <laughs> shut up that's what you sound like. Was it that bad? Um, yeah, but I know that though. That's why I be tell- I'll be like, shut the fuck up. I'll be telling you that, like, it when you're inside of me. Shut the fuck up. Shut up. Don't say nothing. That shit made me f- come even harder though. Really? Shut the fuck up. Ooh, you telling me what to do? <sighs> I told you you want to be submissive for real. That's not submissive. Mm-hmm. No, it's not. Well, shut the fuck up. I'll be telling you that because I know mm. that you're about to get loud and you can't do that because they're gonna hear that. Even if you were a little loud. And your voice is low, so it rumbles, and you can feel that on the walls. I'm like, ah, stop, stop. It was good, though. It was good. Yeah. It was good. 10 out of 10. Um, all right, let's get into your answers. What's a little thing that makes you the happiest? Making me a sandwich, somebody said. Okay. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Wine. Wine used to be that for me. It used to be I come home. Have me a little glass of wine or have my glass of wine. I don't even drink when I cook anymore. Like, who am I? That's just weird. Um, when my husband brings me a Mountain Dew, it's the kid in me. I don't understand that one. <laughs> my mom had her drink of choice. She always had to have her Diet Pepsis. And okay. like, if you brought her a Diet Pepsi, she was it was like a child. That's a killer right there. Like, she loved it. That is a killer. It is, though. I a can't. Diet Pepsi yeah, she is loved your drink it. of choice? She loved Well, that was, you know, at the time, like, everybody thought diet drinks were the, were healthy. That aspartame. Yeah. Mm. But um, iced coffee. Yeah. I like a, I love an iced yeah. coffee. Yeah. Um, a genuine compliment. Okay. Okay. I like that. Um, hey mama text tacos and forehead kisses them forehead kisses man they are never going to go out of style they're not they are never going to go out of style men have man. been using them to trick us for years <laughs> um, what's the little thing that makes you the happiest a hug or my man holding me in his arms while we're laying down aww yeah, I love I love hugs. A booty grab. You goddamn right. Give me some booty. I like a booty grab. What? But sometimes your hand, you be wanting to go inside of the booty. I do be not try to go in. I do be not. Did I say that? Yeah. I don't try to go. I do be not. That's not like a hairstyle. <laughs> I don't try to go inside of your butt. Your finger always ends up between butt cheeks. And a booty grab is just on the outside no, of the butt. No, no. I need to get the whole freaking cheek. And that's what I'm talking about. Like, I want to... I wanna. Mm. That's what I'm talking about. Like... It's too much. It's too much. You got a lot. <sighs> um, laying in bed together, playing Scrabble against each other on our phones. That's, oh, that's, I love that. Yeah, that's tight. Um, uh, I guess I want to amend mine then. Maybe phase 10 makes me the happiest. <laughs> playing phase 10 is fun. 
Um, all right. Somebody said when we're out and walking side by side, he puts his hand on the small of my back. Oh, I love a small of my back. Oh, my God. I love that. Your back done got a little. No, it does not. No, it has not. I like it when, like, oh, my God, we going in. You know how you open the door or something and we going into a place and then you kind of, like, guide me in there with your hand on the small. Oh, my God. You don't do that often. So I'm sorry, I think you just. <laughs> Nigga, I be trying to push you. I fuck? think that now that, that we're just, we just, you just, like, she going to get in there. No, I, hold, I always hold the door for you. I didn't say anything about holding the door, but you don't do, like, the. You don't do the romantic I, little. I don't. It, it's arm never ro- the hand on the waist, like nudge a little bit. Baby, it's never romantic. It's always get your ass in here. But why you can't just be like it's get like your a, ass it's in like here? It's like a little caress, like a ooh. Mm-mm. I love that. Mm-mm. I'm not a. I'm not a. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm romantic person. No, no, no. Not even that. I'm not a uh, a, a violent person, so no, it's not a push. It's no, no. That's what just, it, in my mind. That's what it it's, is. It's like a when you, I don't know, when you're going through a crowd and you with your woman and you put your hand like on her waist and you're just kind of whatever. Anyway, I know what you think it is. I'm just telling you what it ain't. What's <laughs> what a little thing that makes you the happiest? What, what is that the question? Uh, what's a li- yeah? What, what's a little thing that makes you the happiest? Uh, good morning and good night texts. Mm. Yeah, yeah, underrated. Uh, my hair being played with. Yeah, you like that? Oh my god! And you don't do it. I do do it sometimes. No, you don't do it like uh-huh. often. Like you'll scratch my hair every now and again. I was gonna say something. What? I'm gonna say your hair look fragile, so I didn't want to like get in there and just be like tugging and stuff. Motherfucker, <laughs> what you wanted me to say? You ain't shit. Um, a Krispy Kreme with the hot side on. Come on, listen, listen. Come on. That was yeah. me applauding. I don't know if you feel the same way. Yeah, but some about that hot side. I ain't gonna hold you. You know what's crazy? It even t- tastes as good if you microwave it. If you microwave it a little bit, if you get the older ones and you microwave it a little bit, it's just as good. Is it? It's hard to replicate like a fresh taste in the microwave of anything, but something about a Krispy Kreme donut. You throw it in there, you put on a little 10 seconds, 15 seconds. That sounds like way too much. Maybe a little seven. (laughs) (laughs) A little seven seconds. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. What's a thing that what's a little thing that makes you the happiest when Kristen posts tiny things on her IG story? How many times you be doing this, man? I randomly post stuff. But I I am really excited with tiny miniature things. And you know what? I think I'm building a community because every I would get messages that was like, girl, this again, like, uh uh-uh. And then, like, one of my friends messaged me and was like, with the rolled eyes. And I was like, but you watch that shit. And then you choose, like, I watch that whole thing. And listen, come on. A little miniature kitchen where you they make it fried use, fish. You still ain't use the shit that I gave you. I yet. know, because I think I have to get more things. I looked at it. I think I have to get a couple more things. But with your, a little mini fried fish and grits in a tiny kitchen? Shit is stupid. That's so cool. Or when they bake a little cake. They do all, they even season it like you about to throw down. They put seasoning in it. And they bake that little cake in that little oven. It's like, I. (laughs) (laughs) You know, you know what it is. So I understand playing with tiny things. Uh Uh-huh. Right? Mm -hmm. I even understand cooking tiny things. Yes. But what the fuck am I supposed to do after I cook it? Chew on crumbs. It's cool. That's all the fuck it is. But it's it's just like you've made something. It's like a craft. It's right. Cool. But what is the what I've is seen the... them make tiny spaghetti and meatballs. And how you make little meatballs? I just don't understand. It's like a whole nother world. It's like playing with dolls. Like and I under once again, action I understand figures, playing with it. Action figures, all that. You you've created your own world. So it's like a little world. Okay, baby. What? You gonna feed the uh You have to go out of your imagination and have some fun. It's just they little things. You gonna tell me you're not gonna watch a whole video of somebody making little chicken piccata? Little baby chicken piccata? No. You're not gonna watch a video? No. Of them making little chicken piccata? No. You love chicken piccata. I love it. So you don't wanna see them make it for dolls? No. All right. Aaliyah, don't worry about now, it. Now, if you was to feed it to like a squirrel or something like that, 
I'm not worried about all that. I'm worried about being living in this world. Just like when I told you that Taraji got a play hair salon at her house. I, I understand so that. So how do you understand her having a play hair salon, uh -huh. but you can't understand just having a play kitchen where you're making real things? Because there's work that is involved. Yeah, it's, the, it's creativity. There's work involved in a play hair salon. You have to take time to do the hair. I'm, so in a little kitchen, you taking time to make the recipe. I get all the steps until the end, and I'm just gonna look at the plate like, "What the fuck? Now what?" It's cool. You I could have made pictures. this shit big and actually enjoyed a meal. <sighs> Eat before you do it. So now you just enjoy the activity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make me something one day. All right. What's a little thing that makes you the happiest? Back rubs or when she plays with my locks? Okay. Um, seeing my nephews light up when they see me. Oh, that's, that's a, nice. That's a good one. Um, hearing my son's heartbeat for the first time a few weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a that's a wild one. Oh man. That's crazy. And them them first little heartbeats, it tell you everything you need to know, man. Why? That and the first uh ultrasound when the thing be just running around. Yeah. Oh the man. The thing be running around. And you just be like, Lord, this nigga got energy. Yeah, that's why. Yeah. 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 I wish I would have seen all this running in them twins <laughs> when they were in my stomach. I could not have predicted all this running. Um, what's a little thing that makes you the happiest? Cigars and bourbon. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. That's a good one. Um, when he remembers something I said a week ago. Hey. Mm, hallelujah. I'll be remembering. All right. Um, hearing, baby, I rolled you up a couple of blunts. Damn, a couple. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Like, <laughs> how many blunts do you need to be high? A couple of like. blunts. Either you be high as hell or you got some terrible trash weed. Yeah, it's one or the other. <laughs> three weeds, three weeds. <laughs> three weeds will get me to where I need to go. <laughs> um, a simple thank you or acknowledgement for the work I put in. There we go. Yeah, that's good. Words of affirmation. Um, what is a little thing that makes you the happiest? A fresh car wash and vacuum. Yo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That'd be my shit, though. I know. That'd be my shit. Oh. And then you get the scent. You get, like, the car bomb. Throw it in there. Oh. I've been yawning my tail off. The car bomb, they got to sit in there for, like, 15 minutes. Yeah, and then man. you can't get in the car. Yeah. I, I get it, though. Man. Um, when my husband takes a shower, I know I'm getting some. He don't do it often. Ooh, what? 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 <laughs> He trying to get clean. Uh, first of all, why? Why are you okay with that? Hey, listen. Oh, he gonna take. We the fuck because he taking a shower. How about he's clean? Nah, man. He be washing up most he of the time. He getting in your bed with that nasty body. No, he be washing up. The important part. Nah, that's gross. Get that. Get that nasty body out of my bed. <laughs> Uh, little things that make you the happiest. When my woman says, "Come here," sat me down, heard my problems, and gave me head. Lord, that's what I'm talking about. That's crazy. Tried to get you to give me head last night. Yeah, yeah. I'm going through some things. Um, <laughs> shut up. Uh, compliments from other women. Is that a woman? I think. Yeah. Yeah, it's a woman. Yeah, I love that too. And I'm quick to give a compliment out too. Don't let me like something. I walk past anybody and be like, "Oh, your hair cute." Oh, your shoes cute. Yeah, I can never do that to a dude. I do that all the time. I do it all Ooh, the time. Oh, your hair cute. I and you can see people light up when you do it too. You always but... gotta ask, hey dog, who did your hair, man? That that's the best you can say. <laughs> that's who did funny your hair? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying I mean. to get mine to look like that, because that's nice. Your, your son got the Iversons, B. Yo, who did that, man? <laughs> yeah, you know I mean. Now we talking about years. Now there we're was talking about the Iversons. Now there were there was a time. There was a time in the early 2000s where you could say, dude is fresh. Yo, that's fresh. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and in the 80s. But that was the only time you could really pay the compliment. I was the go-to for the Iversons, though. When I worked at the barbershop, all the guys came to me to get those braids. Wow. But also because my cousin had them all the time, I would do his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Everybody knew that I did them. And his but, looked nice. I remember his yeah. from back in the day. Everybody knew I did them, so then they would come to me. And like at the barbershop, that's all I was doing. Racking all the time. up. Yeah. Uh, you were probably charging fifteen dollars. No, it wasn't that. It wasn't that much. What? No, it was. No, it was. It was like 
It was a little less than a hundred. It should have been more than that. But oh, okay. at the time, really, yeah, them barbershop niggas didn't know how to price hairstyles like that. And I was young, so I wasn't really. I was like twenty. Mm. I was like nineteen, twenty when I started working there. Mm. So I think I, they took advantage of me, um, in that sense, not in any other way. So that, <laughs> but like they, nah, I wasn't getting paid what I deserved to get paid. Um, I think it was like forty five dollars. Okay, well, I, mean, I feel like that's that's reasonable. Nah, not with prices now. Forty five sounds like nothing yeah, compared true. to the way that they charge for braids now, well, and they shit. were so small. I remember when haircuts were ten dollars. Yeah, man, that's when manicures used to be twenty dollars, nigga. Yeah, I remember that too. If you go in and get a regular manicure, that should be like seventy dollars. That's wild. And I get crazy stuff. Shout out to my nail tech. Um, having time to properly shit before leaving out. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great one to, to read. That is me, son. Yeah, to, so you can relax. You yeah. don't know what rush you. Yep. What are little things that make you the happiest? Um, lasting that extra 15 seconds. Okay. That's hilarious. Um, my autistic students are too honest. One tells the principal to get out. No one likes her. Uh, so I guess nobody likes the principal. Yeah. So they be like, get out. Yeah. And that's funny because what are you going to say to them? That's how they really feel. <laughs> you know, now, now that I am a father of special needs children, yeah. I feel like it's okay for me to argue with kids with special needs. So if that student was to tell me to get out, no, I ain't getting out. What you mean, get out? Because everybody else will feel bad. And I don't. But it's like, they really be mean to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they, Little rude ass. They really be We fighting. They really mean that shit. <laughs> Huh, I forgot. Wait, Cameron came and asking you something. I can't remember what it was. And I think I answered. He was like, no, not you, mommy. I'm asking daddy. And I was like, <laughs> what am I going to say to him? He was asking you. My bad for jumping in. He didn't ask me shit. Why did I answer? It did ask me daddy, so. <laughs> he was like, daddy, so. Da, 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 da. And I was like, oh, am I mad at him? Because I did what I didn't. Yeah, man. I'm just buttoning in. Okay. Yeah, you got to drop kick him. Yeah. Um, what are little things that make you the happiest? Um, my old lady walking out the shower. Yeah. You don't care about that. I uh, do care about no, that. No, you don't. You don't you don't think I care when you walk out the shower? <sighs> I care every time you walk out the shower. No, my, my shit is when you take off your bra for the night, man. Titties. Yes, every day. They are exposed. It's every day. <laughs> yes. look, at them, look at them titties. Yeah, you know I mean. Look at them titties. Look at them things flapping around in the wind. Baby. And that's the problem. What? You always gotta take it there. Where? You don't think your titties like air? <laughs> Damn. <sighs> <laughs> There's nothing I could actually say. So. <laughs> Let's take a pause for the cause, man. Hey, everybody. Uh, I think I need a tissue, but okay. whatever. Um, we are on the road still. Um, we're trying to work on something for November, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, but October 13th, which is this Sunday, if you're listening to the podcast on time, this Sunday we are going to be in Las Vegas at the Wise Guys in Town Square. Make sure you get your tickets ASAP. ASAP, like right now, like pause the podcast, go get your tickets. Y'all been asking us to come to Vegas for a couple of years and we're finally coming. So we're super, super excited about it. I think we're changing up our show a little bit. I mean, it's different from, well, y'all have never seen the show, but um, we're going to have a good time. Um, I'm, I'm really, really, really excited about going. I think we're going to be there for a couple of days, like two or three. I don't know. Um, but October 13th, Las Vegas, Wise Guys in Town Square. Get your tickets. October 26th, Oklahoma. We're going to be in Oklahoma City at the Bricktown Comedy Club. And then the very next day on October 27th, we're going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma at the Bricktown Comedy Club there. Um, these venues are big, so we kind of need y'all to show out. Y'all been asked us to come to a lot of these cities. Um, we... Put out the dates for Oklahoma on, um, and we couldn't work the dates out. Uh, there was like miscommunication. So this is the rescheduled dates that we have: um, October twenty sixth, OKC, and October twenty seventh in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Make sure you get your tickets ASAP. We want to see y'all in the building. Super excited about that. Um, also, we have a date for Virginia Beach. I do not remember the date. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. Um, 
But when uh, it is officially announced and tickets go on sale, we will let you know ASAP. Y'all been asking us about being home and we're going to be home. So make sure you get your tickets. Spread the word. It's hometown. Um, so we want to see y'all in the building. Don't embarrass us. Uh, <laughs> um, and November 9th, this is for me. November 9th, I'm going to be at uh, the Rivers Casino in Portsmouth, Virginia with Angela Johnson. So make sure you get your tickets to all the things. Um, I think Angela might still have tickets left. I'm not sure. Um, but I'll be doing stand-up, so for that one. But make sure you get your tickets. We can't wait to see y'all. I'm super excited about Vegas this weekend. It's going to be a good time. So we're getting close to the holiday season. Crazy. This year is going by super, super fast. And y'all know I love the holidays. Have you thought about a gift for yourself this year? One that has the power to help you grow, learn, and become a better version of you. Get started on those uh, NYE little traditions like early. Give yourself the gift of language by getting Babbel. The boys have always been fascinated with different languages. They literally write different alphabets on the car window in the morning before going to school. We thought Babbel would be a great way to start their journey to become by try all the lingos. Over the holidays, we have a family member from Russia who will be in to greet them um, to like kind of see how they interact with them and stuff. Very exciting. Uh, speak like a whole new you with Babbel, the language learning app that gets you talking. With quick 10-minute lessons handcrafted by over 200 language experts, Babbel gets you talking a whole new language in three weeks. Here's a special holiday deal for our listeners only. Right now, get up to 60% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners at babbel.com slash A-T-W. Get up to 60% off at babbel.com slash A-T-W, spelled B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash A-T-W. Rules and restrictions may apply. Yeah? You got me some tissue? You got me some tissue? They're going to watch me dig up my nose while I'm on screen. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Well, while you're doing that, just got to remind you, please join the Patreon. (laughs) Patreon is popping. That is nasty. I'm sorry. (laughs) I don't know why I got you the tissue. Um, But no, Patreon is popping. We up there each and every week with a new episode. Um, I'm actually going to vlog our trip to Vegas. Um, You know, the show is this Sunday. Um, But we'll be out there for about two, three days. So, um... I'm going to go ahead and vlog our our little trip because we really don't get trips to go out anywhere. We really don't get no time to spend with each other in different places. Mm, so, yeah, um, yeah that, that should be fun. I'm going to put that up on Patreon. Um, also, make sure you join us on socials. Uh, we are on the Twitter or the, the X. X app. That's what they said. Uh, we're on Facebook. We are on Instagram. And we are on TikTok. So uh, they'll all be found, and then we pod. Yes. Yeah, yeah, and then we pod. Go ahead, add it, and that's what it is. Uh, you get your tickets. Hmm? And then we had text.com. Did you say yeah. that? Yeah, no, but you can say that. Um, yeah, make sure you get your tickets at and then we had text.com or the link tree in our Instagram bio, our TikTok bio, all that stuff. TikTok? Uh, tick, TikTok <laughs> bio. Bio, guys, <laughs> make sure you get the tickets ASAP. Spread the word if we're coming to your city right now. It's Vegas and Oklahoma. So super excited to see y'all there. Yes. And once again, we're coming to Raleigh and Virginia Beach in December. So um, be on the lookout for those uh, announcements yeah. coming very soon. Yep. Um, How was your week? I think my week was okay. Okay. Um, I've just been... Cleaning, I think. I didn't really do anything. Did I do anything? I don't think so. Right? Nah, I ain't, I ain't really done shit. Um, I bought some pictures to put in our living room. That seems very minor to y'all, but uh, we've been living here, what, over over a year? Over two years? Over a year. Over a year. Um, and we're, like, in year two now, and we haven't decorated at all. We just she calls kinda, it a trap house. Does it look like a trap house? It don't look like there's any love here. So I started buying little things. I bought some flowers. I got pictures on the walls. Um, there's a couple more things I want to get, but it makes me feel better. I know you might not care or whatever, but like they're just things that make it feel more like home that I've been trying to add in the house just to, I don't know, bring a little comfort 
Stre- less stress. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but like it, when it just feels more comforting, you're even if you got shit to stress about, like you're comfortable. You feel a little bit better. Okay. So uh, I've just been adding little things here and there, and that's pretty much been it. Getting ready for this trip to mm-hmm. Vegas mm-hmm. and all of those things. What about you? Um, pretty cool week. Uh, no real craziness has happened. Um. But today, I'm supposed to be going out with my homeboy um, for his birthday. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, he hit me up. Oh, that's why you have on that? No. Oh, okay. No, no, I don't know why I have this on. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Whose birthday? Oh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Julian. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, it's okay. his birthday. Uh, his birthday was yesterday, actually. Um, and he had a really bad birthday mm-hmm. and, uh, he, uh, he was like, you know, but we can go out tomorrow. And I was like, all right, cool. And I started thinking like, man, I don't, I don't know what to do with this guy. Was he looking for you to figure out something to do? Well, he, he hit me with the, uh, you know, you just decide what you want to do. You know, you decide what you want to do and you know, it's all good, man. I'm but down. it's his birthday. Why is he making you decide? I don't know. Like, and I don't really know what the hell to do for no grown man on his birthday. Because mm. my idea going out is karaoke. And I'm sure I can find a karaoke spot on a well, Thursday. It's, it's, well, he does sing too. He does. He does. Do you think he would enjoy that? He might. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea what I'm supposed to be doing, but I feel pressure now. I don't know. Most people are like, let's go to a bar, get some drinks. I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. And maybe that'll be the kind of thing he want to do. Maybe. You should ask him. I did. This is a very I weird. I asked him three times. It's weird to be like, you pick what we going to do for my birthday. Yeah. I asked him three times. What you trying to do, man? It's like, tell me what you trying to do. So what you trying to do? And you know he, he he didn't tell me shit. Do you bowl? Like I don't know. What do you? I don't do? want to go bowling. I I don't know what you're supposed. Feels to like do. a date. I I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what you're supposed to do besides let's go get drinks. You want to play pool? I don't know. I don't want to play pool either. Feels like a date. Dudes go play pool all the time together. Straight yeah, no, you're right. You're right. But I no. I don't want to go pool playing with him. Uh, so you go get a drink? Maybe. I don't know. I I just what don't know. What is today? Today's Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't really. But I don't go nowhere. I'm really the wrong person to even like go back and forth with about this. I have no idea. Yeah, I I so that that's what I'm trying to figure out. Um All I heard was that's one less person I got to make dinner for, and I'm excited about that. What you mean? I'm not making you dinner. Oh. Huh. All right. You go out and get dinner. <laughs> yeah but. yeah but other than that though the week was cool man i'm I'm just super excited to get away again um yeah yeah we go to la for a day for another birthday yeah yeah and then- which he had plans so you know <laughs> that's how you're supposed to do it yeah exactly exactly i'll come to your plans yeah you know i mean celebrate you uh, you don't even know what to do for my birthday how are you gonna figure out this I, other nigga birthday my god you like, should tell him that be your like man i don't so close dude i don't know what to do i have no idea what do you want to do for your birthday i don't know i hadn't thought about it uh, I mean, it's not like a milestone but i think every day that you can breathe is a milestone Mm. Um, Unless you're broke <laughs> Yeah there's that um, I mean I've always wanted to do a party But I don't I mean My birthday is like after the holidays And stuff it just doesn't feel I don't know Can niggas be broke Yeah after yeah by the time it's my birthday It's like we just did Christmas Yeah So yeah. Just did Christmas and paid rent And New Year's Eve like whatever else people mm-hmm. Yeah so I don't know. I do want to do something. I think I want to get cute. Okay. Okay. Check. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's like a get cute, like getaway type of thing, even if it's like an hour away or a, a dinner. I could do a dinner. Hmm. Like a dinner with people or? Just- yeah, I could do a dinner with people, maybe. Hmm. But I really don't know. I never know until it's my birthday. I'm just like, I want to do something. Sometimes I don't want to do anything, but I, I want to do something for my birthday this year. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I'll keep that in mind. 
Yeah. I will keep that in mind. And that's all you'll do, huh? No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> just be in mind. No, I'm trying to I'm trying to pre plan. Like, okay, what are we gonna do? It's okay. You don't have to go all out like I did for you because I love you or nothing. Well, it was my forty, so yeah, well, you ain't gotta do that on forty one. Oh, I'm I'm not. <laughs> I'm absolutely not. I'm. D- I, I'll, it might be some regular shit. I might have the kids make you a cake. Nah, son, don't do that. Why? No, I don't want that. Why? Because that's not going to do anything for me. Who said I need to do something for you? I did it for you last year. No, 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 no. It's not going to do anything for me. Okay. Like them making a cake. What if this? I could do this. What if I teach the kids a song in parts and have them sing it for you? No. What do you mean? Because I'm going to be listening to the parts and seeing where they're messing up. You love a family band. What's wrong with you? <laughs> What's wrong? Not my family. Why? No. I was just talking about the twins. I don't know about them big kids. Oh, well, we do that every day. I know, but them by themselves singing it. Listen, they hit us with the, uh, they like they like Jim Jones' balling song. Yeah. Don't know where the fuck they heard that at. Yeah. But that is their jam. They love that shit. And and they be putting their hands up, balling. Doing balling. Balling. That's what they say, balling. <laughs> balling. <laughs> oh, my God. So just like, see, they do voices, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it runs in the family. Look at us. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, let's get to some topics, man. Uh, so... Lil Duvall's always on, you know, X Twitter, X Twitter, all that. Um, and he put up this this uh, this tweet. I just want to get your thoughts on it. The fuck you building with a grown man over forty? The fuck you building with a grown man over? 40? So I understand what people say with this but i think that when you're well, what do people say first i mean like oh that's too old you need to hang yourself together you you whatever but i think just being realistic and being around this age mm-hmm. i think i don't know when you take people for like individuals you understand that everybody is just not in the same place mm-hmm. and we gotta stop for one we gotta stop putting time limits on shit now I like I just think it works for certain people want you to be together by a certain by a certain age. And I know like if I'm together and the other person is together, I mean it's kind of your choice if you want to help them grow or not. Like that's not for everybody to be in the trenches like that. Very but I don't true. I don't I don't I just don't like the age thing when people put that on put caps on things. I think it's what you want to deal with. Hmm. And if you see any progress on what they're building. Hmm. Okay. Because success is not always going to hit you in the time frame that you think is going to hit you. Now, if if they've been working at it so long and ain't shit happening at all, then you kind of need to change course. But if like people are, if you see the light at the end of the tunnel, like you really see it, then if you want to stay there for that, that's that's on you. Hmm. I don't think we need to judge people for it's what they feel like putting themselves. So. Is it crazy, and I'm just asking this, Mm -hmm. is it crazy to try to build something from the bottom with a person over 40? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. Okay. But. Why wouldn't you do it? Because, uh, well, especially with with my, me personally, I'm not where I want to be. So I think taking on another task (laughs) would be like. Okay, I like I can't I can't go through that with you because neither one of us is stable. Right. So I can't put all that on somebody else. Like I'm not I'm not where I want to be either. I can sustain it, but I'm not whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the difference with me and like with us is that we we work together, mm-hmm. <laughs> so we see the same vision and we kind of know where we're at. Mm-hmm. But like somebody coming in and like at 43, all of a sudden they're like, I want to be a rapper. Mm-hmm. I know what it takes to be a creative and to start from the bottom. So I I understand. I think certain careers, maybe building after 40 is a little crazy. I think that's why I'm a little more sensitive to it because I know what creatives go through. And yeah. being a creative myself, I understand that life a little differently. Right. And it's, it's way different than just having like a steady nine to five or a corporate job. And right. I can understand if you... 
if your mindset is like, no, it's it's get money first and this is what I've had and mm -hmm. whatever, like you don't really understand what creatives take. Mm -hmm. um, but I also don't want you to drop everything and be a creative and you not stable in whatever you dropped. If that makes any sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, like, cause I, I've heard stories of people that at 40 or 50, mm -hmm. you just start a whole new career. Yeah, I can, you know, that's fine. But they've already established something beforehand. Yeah, and they can sustain life right. while also pursuing that. Right, right. Um, But that's what I'm, the, it's, I think it's the age cap. I don't really want you to, I don't know. I don't know what happened in your life for you to get to wherever you are, like, Maybe you couldn't have started like maybe there's something going on in your life where you couldn't have started as early as you wanted to. to or maybe you didn't know that's what you wanted. Or, yeah, to do. maybe you didn't know. That's I think that's another thing with just people in general. Like when you're talking to a college kid and you're like, you need to decide what you want to do right now. Mm -hmm. Like there's still kids at the end of the day. Maybe that might change later on. Yeah. I don't want to put that pressure on somebody to be like, figure out what you want to do at 18, like right now. Now, you can figure out what you want to go to school for. That's different. But, like, this will be the career for the rest of your life. You need to know what you're going to do. Right. I think that's a lot of pressure to put somebody. I think it is. But at the same time, uh, I mean, if you go into young people, mm -hmm. I understand at 18 at least having your first idea yeah. together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, knowing what it is that you want to do at that time. Um, but that's what I'm saying. I guess as far as building. And I feel like when you build with a person like that, mm -hmm. you know, at that young age, it's one thing because it's like, well, we both have time. Yeah. But after 40, it's like we really don't have that much living time. Just be a, at least be established if you're going to start a whole new career. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Just have a way to sustain your life um, if you're going to be like, well, fuck this. I'm going to do something else. Do you think, it, do you think, what kind of strain unless do you think? Unless you're one of them people that want to just live off the land. I know people like that too. Yeah, I could never be that person. But I know people that are okay with just, you know, getting an RV or not having an RV, hitchhike, like whatever. There mm -hmm. are people that want to do that. I think it's just whatever the lifestyle is that you want to live. What kind of strain do you think it would put on a relationship if you're building that late? Do you think it's, it's, it's. It depends on the relationship. I think it just depends on the relationship. There are some people that are like, don't worry, I got it. Mm -hmm. And are completely okay with just taking care of things while you're trying to find yourself. Mm -hmm. And I know after 40 seems like, why are you trying to find yourself? But a lot of people go into careers that they don't really want just because they feel like that's what they're supposed to be doing. Right. And you I might, wish I would have done that early. Done that and then been like, all yeah. right, now yeah. pursue the rest of the stuff. Hell yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, I did those things, but I think I just learned early that I didn't really like those things. Mm -hmm. I, I should have been a little more responsible and uh, stuck some of them out and just, you know, saved a shit some more money. Mm -hmm. um, but I didn't enjoy it. I wasn't, I wasn't happy. I th and and you know, that brings me to uh, something that one of my boys texted me the other day. He said. What do you, matter of fact, I don't even want to mess it up, so I'm going to pull it up real quick. Because when he hit me with this, it made me stop in my tracks, and I was like, wait a minute, that's a really good question. He was like, yo, you should you should ask this question today. I was like, it's not really a question of the day type joint, but I think it's still a great question. Okay. He was like, um, what's more important, being happy or being at peace? Hmm. Because I feel like I think being happy, I but I, I that's a hard question to ask because I think I guess being at peace is being like comfortable and you're not stressed mm -hmm. and you're taking care of things, mm -hmm. and that is a happiness because you're not stressed. But like being genuinely happy with the way that your life is going, like I feel like that is important. I feel like you can be happy and be at peace. So the way he put it um, was basically happiness is a fleeting feeling. You can be happy some days or some weeks, months, years, and then other times you're not happy. Mm -hmm. But when you're at peace as a totality, mm -hmm. you're, you're not affected by the happy moments or the sad moments, whatever the case oh, may so be. Oh, so then, yeah, really, I guess it doesn't matter. But there, But you could be... 
you could have all your bills covered and not have that strain on you, Mm -hmm. but just not, not be happy in the way that your life is going. Right. So you're, I guess, being at peace is being stress-free because I don't, I feel like if you're at peace, then you're happy. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, when I think about it, the original uh, answer I had was being, before he said what he said, was being happy. Um, But then I think about it, I'm like, when I, when when I'm really, if I take away being bipolar, Mm -hmm. if I take, by the way, uh, happy, what is it, mental health? Mm -hmm. Happy World Mental Health Day. World Mental Health Day. Um, When I take away being bipolar, I have been a happy person because of the choices that I've made. Mm -hmm. But the choices that I've made has interrupted my peace in life. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And the older I get, the more I want to be at peace. Mm -hmm. I, I can understand that. So... Because it feels almost irresponsible to just be happy. Right. Right. Which is a weird thing saying once I say it out of my mouth. That feels weird. Like to not be, I don't know. I mean, I, w- I would like to be stress-free. Mm-hmm. And I, I guess, honestly, when you die, I mean, you're not going to know what you felt when you were alive anyway, which is very morbid to say, but like. I mean, you're you're not gonna know if you have peace either. So I guess it's really what is in the moment. To say happiness is a fleeting feeling. I mean, all you really have are fleeting feelings because you're always gonna be in the moment. Because after you pass, it's not gonna matter. And there are a lot of times, like, like with I think I talked about hibernation. Like I wish I could just sleep and stock all of that rest up where I don't feel tired. Okay. Like when you go to sleep, you feel like you're catching up on sleep. And really, I mean, you're. You are going to go back to being tired. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So like. So you can't catch up on sleep. Once it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. So once you're gone, you're, it's not going to matter if you're at peace or if you were happy. So wouldn't you rather just be happy in the moments that you are alive? But you just said it was irresponsible. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm struggling between that. Oh. Like, I don't know if it's irresponsible to be happy, but at the end of the day, none of this matters. So wouldn't you rather just be happy? But it all does matter, though. To say none of this matters means, uh, to me, sounds like a very unhappy life. To say none of it matters. No, and I don't mean it in a way like I'm sad, but like, while you're alive, when being at peace, yeah, but like, don't you want to enjoy what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. And I think enjoyment is more locked in with happiness than peace. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Peace is like worry free. And that's that's great. I want to be worry free. I want to be at peace and happy. But like when I'm happy, like I'm really enjoying it. I feel that. Peace, hmm. peace is kind of steady. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's a steady feeling that you'll kind of just always feel, but it 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 could be dull. I guess. <laughs> I guess, yeah. It could be uh, without excitement. Yeah. Like, you can be at peace without excitement. Yeah, you just don't feel stress. Right. But when you're happy, you are you feel. You feel that shit. Yeah. It's like a high. Yeah, I took a long t- way to get to that, but that's what my point was. Right? Nah, listen, sometimes I take that, yeah. that route. I kind of yeah. talk myself out of it and talk myself back in it. <laughs> so, yeah. Man. Yeah. Okay. Okay, man. Well, for all those over 40 that are building from the bottom, I'll tell you like this. If you see the vision, can't nobody else tell you different. And if that's what's going to make you happy, then do that. But don't expect somebody to stay or kick it with you. There's that. You know, if you want to just go ahead and upheave your life or whatever the case may be. There are people that work till they die just to build Mm-hmm. There are people that are building forever to get to a certain point. Like, like Prince wanted all the artists to earn to own their masters, and it seemed like after he died, everybody started buying their shit up. Right. But he was always like promoting that and preaching that and trying to get to that place, and he never got to see it. But it was like something he was always working towards. Mm-hmm. 
Like there are people that work forever to get to a certain place and it never happens, but they know they believe in that fight or they believe in that happiness or they believe in that end result. So it, I don't know. What do you believe in? As far as what? In general, you said Prince believed in something he fought for. And I was just thinking like, damn, I don't fight for anything I believe in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like there's nothing that I'm like, yeah, that right there. I'm fighting for that. And that is my life's mission. No. I don't know if I'm fighting for anything, but I know that I believe in just people being themselves. Okay. And I try to preach that as much as I can. Like, I try my best not to worry about what everybody else thinks of me, even mm -hmm. though sometimes I do fall into that rabbit hole. But just being yourself, everybody not being the same and like respecting that and understanding that everybody is not the same person. Okay. People are complete. And I don't think enough people fight for that. I think a lot of people fight for inclusion. And you can still be included, but I want to come in as myself. I don't want to be molded into something else. Right. It's like a lot of times behind the scenes, you'll be like, Chris, you can't say that. Or don't say that. Or don't do that. And I'm like, why? That's how I truly feel. Yeah, don't say that. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of shit I don't say. But like, if anything, it's just the understanding that everyone is not the same. And I think uh, having, our, having the twins, having autistic kids, put that more into perspective. Mm. Acceptance for just being an individual. That's what's up. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. I'm going to find a, a cause. I'm going to find a cause oh, to baby. live for. Well, you you 40. You can stop building. <laughs> I think you have turned into whoever you're going to be. I don't think you have to pick up a new cause. Oh, man. Um, damn, this is a weird pod right now. It so, is. It's all over the place. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going to take a left turn, man. Are, do you feel like you my whore? Mm, that is a good question. What so? What is the definition of? See, don't do that. Why? Just offer your definition of being a whore. So I feel like I'm your whore. I'll I'll give you think about that. I'll give you some context. Um, <laughs> I was on social media. I was on Instagram the other day, and um, Cameron. I guess he's been talking about um looking for a woman that wants to be a whore, not a slut or a hoe but a whore for their man. Um, he, I guess he was looking for one and he was saying he was taking applications. Um, <laughs> what? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, people, I guess women have been sending him videos and stuff and all that. And yeah, it, it's, it's been mad crazy. But then I was like, yo, do I have a whore? Like, is my wife, my whore? Like, does, is she, does she whore herself out for me? <sighs> no, I don't think I do. That's the problem. Do you want me to? Why don't you think you do? What's your, what's your definition of whoring myself out? Oh, it says a prostitute. So. Yeah, and a prostitute does Do you think that I whore myself? I don't do anything. Sexually for your person. No, it says a prostitute. Like, I guess you said whore. Do I whore myself out? I, well, I didn't mean whore yourself out like, you know, you going out there and just whoring. Because yeah, I said not a whore, you know. A, slump, a whore for you? Mm-hmm. Do you think I am? I think there are times. I think there are definitely times. Explain. Um, there are times when you are uh, without a care in the world sexually mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. And you give yourself willingly. Mm -hmm. you, you're not um, held back by anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I can ask for anything except your butthole and mm -hmm. it's going down. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, for whatever reason, is far and in between. Mm -hmm. um, maybe not far and in between, but there are times. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's not like you are whore for me. I think it's times, like... For me to be one. Explain. I think there are like times. I don't know. Like I, I no. I think I'm pretty much like if you were to ask for it, I'd, I'd probably do it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm just tired and I don't want to do it. Right, and I'm, I'm not talking about those times. But I think I'd probably do whatever. Okay. For the most part, I haven't. I don't think I've said anything where I'm like, no, nah, I'm not doing that. Right. Nah. 
No, I, I don't think so. Yeah, so I, yeah, I be hoeing. I'm a whore. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I guess so. Yeah, I'll do. I'll try anything once. Do you at, think? At least do you think all twice. women should be a whore for their man? Um, no, I'm not. I don't think that anybody should do anything they don't want to do. Some people don't want to be whores. Some people just they have this is their sex and they can name their sex and point out the things on one hand that they will do. And there's somebody that is okay with that. Everybody's not into everything. Well, I'm not saying you got to be into everything. I know. So you find somebody that's suitable for you. Everybody don't want to do all the shit. But should you be into anything for your partner sexually? And not if you're not comfortable. If you're not comfortable, no, don't do it. And, and there agree. are people I, I, that are okay with that. I agree, I agree with that. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, do you think that if you're not willing to do the things that will please your partner in the bed, that you are more likely for your partner to want to not be a partner anymore? I think that's something that you should discuss in the beginning. I think everybody should have conversations about sex before they get in relationships so you can know what your expectations are. I think everybody should be having these conversations. People don't want to talk about shit, but if you plan on fucking that person, you got to be able to open your mouth and say some shit. Some people, that's too much for them to talk about sex. But if you're going to have the sex, you should talk about the things that you are okay with and are not okay with. Not facts. Facts. Yeah, because like... Yeah. What? Because like... Like... Like, we've had threesomes or whatever else, and I was with somebody that was just not into that kind of shit. Mm -hmm. And I was okay with that, but then I started realizing, I was like, man, I kind of would want to be adventurous. Mm -hmm. So you kind of know when you're not compatible and when you're not, and when you are. So you got to have those discussions. That's something I learned late with that person. Would you, I know I wouldn't, mm -hmm. but would you, <sighs> Would you uh, 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 stop being who you are sexually mm -hmm. in order to be with a person that you feel has everything else? I did. Well, but there were also things that I hadn't really acknowledged that I was into with that person. I like. I'm talking about f with full knowledge of what you were about and into. Would I stop? Would you and, would you stop those things in order to be with this person that you think is great in every other way? So I that's what I'm saying. I think I did. Okay. I think I did, but I also wasn't aware that there are people that are okay with you being into a lot of shit. Wow. Okay. So I I would watch porn and about things that I liked, but mm -hmm. I never in my head could really wrap my head. I, I mean, I couldn't wrap my thoughts around someone also enjoying these things or this being okay to talk about with somebody. Right. Um, so I think I did that with most of my relationships. I would just, I knew I was into stuff, but it, I didn't feel like I was supposed to be able to vocalize those things. So I just never did them and thought to myself, I would never do anything crazy or not crazy, but I wouldn't do any of the extracurricular things that I like because that's not re what being in a relationship is about. Hmm. I didn't learn that stuff until late. Okay. 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 So, what about you? I know you can't. Yeah, not at all. Nah, yeah, fuck no, fuck that. No, um, no, no. I am this person, and sex is so important to me mm -hmm. that if you are not down with at least these things, mm -hmm. then we cannot be together, and I don't give a fuck who you are. And if we are together, then you have to understand that I'm going to step out. And also, as a woman, I was just afraid that somebody would judge me. That's why I never really talked about the things that I liked. Because I was, I was, I always thought they were supposed to be secrets. Like, they were supposed to be something that I just liked and would never do. Like, mm. it was wrong for me to want things that I wanted. Okay. So, um, yeah, I didn't learn until I got out. And I was like, oh, it, I don't think this is wrong. I Yo, can you're saying you got like out. It it's military, hilarious. Like it was the military. <laughs> um, maybe it was. But, yeah, I didn't realize those things until I got out. And I was like, oh, there are people that are cool with me wanting to do these things. Right. Um, so 
I don't know. That's why you got to have those conversations. Nah, that ass. That ass. You got to have all those th- mm-hmm. up front mm-hmm. soon. Matter of fact, I'm going to try like three things. And if you ain't down with two of them. You could, we could talk about them first. I mean, you, throw a dick somewhere we didn't talk about. <laughs> 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 don't, just, don't just throw a dick in my ear and be like, I'm just, well, I was trying. I was just seeing you like I, it. I, just, you know just see, I see you don't like that. All right. Yeah. Check that off the list. Yeah, you know. Yeah, don't, don't just do that. Hey, you know, but we was comfortable first. Though. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. All yeah. right. Yeah, Digging I mean. the nose. Yeah. Digging the nose. <laughs> All right. That's number two. That's hey, number two. Hey, we got to go. Got to yeah. go. Yeah. Um, Melania Trump recalls first time meeting Donald Trump in 1998. Says he hit on her while a date while on a date with another woman. Of course he did. <laughs> what? Why, why are we reading this? Of would, course he did. Would you deal with somebody that was trying to get at you even though they was with somebody else? Ah oh, man, I don't know because at at the age now, uh huh, I'm married, so I don't know. D- I'm, but without listen, your married listen, brain, listen, I, but I can't think about that because when I was younger, when I was younger, I I would, oh, man, I'm great at, at at I would in the back of my mind be doing stuff to attract that person, but where it wasn't my fault. Say that again. You was a whole so I No, I would do things <laughs> like, oh my God. Like I would just do things or like be uh, that I, I knew were attractive to that person, but they would come to me. Like I wouldn't go to them. I would just do things that I knew that. So you were seducing a motherfucker. But I didn't, I didn't, it wasn't like an obvious seduction. I'm just a really good person. This sounds bad because it sounds like yeah man here we go. It sounds like I would do that now, like but this is when I was younger, but like now I'm really just a nice person. Like even probably in the last, so you'd be extra nice in the last like 15 years. I'm literally just a nice person. I've had people like not like me because they thought I was flirting and I wasn't flirting. Mm -hmm. But when I was younger, you was flirting, but not flirting. I would just be the type of person that they, I knew they'd want to come talk to. Okay. Okay, that that's fucked up. Yeah, but now I'm just nice. And then people misconstrue it. So I don't know what, what I'm supposed to do. Nobody. Nobody. When the last time somebody tried to holler at you that you actually knew? Oh, that I knew? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Probably a comic or something. Okay. But no, not, not that I knew. No. Oh. Maybe... Uh, if they know anything about me, you're everywhere. Well, but oh yeah, that's kind of hard. You're in every well, picture. Well, niggas, niggas be niggas. I'm gonna start taking though. selfies again. <laughs> Cause you're in every fucking thing I have. <laughs> I used to take selfies too. What the fuck? We gotta start. Yeah, we gotta go back to selfies. We gotta go back to selfies. We gotta like we alone. We gotta yeah. start taking pictures like we. Do people ourselves. still take selfies? I don't know. But I, I, or I'm gonna turn the timer and walk away from the picture. But I gotta start being by myself in pictures. Okay. Because okay. all my pictures, they with you or something, or you taking it and you tagged on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> it's something like no, that. No, you ain't gotta take. You ain't gotta tag me. That's, yeah, oh, that's I, your uh, choice. You, uh, you ain't got to say it but once. <laughs> I'm alone. I'm gonna start looking alone out here. <laughs> God. I'm available, nigga. No, not available. Just alone. Um, Jennifer Lopez admits Ben Affleck divorce almost took her out for good. Um, I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep reading. It almost did, but now on the other side of it, I think to myself, fuck, that is exactly what I needed. Thank you, God. I'm sorry it took me so long. I'm sorry that you had to do this to me so many times. I should have learned it two or three times ago. I get it. You had to hit me really hard over the head with a fucking sledgehammer. You dropped the house on me. Don't have to do it again. So I'm nosy and I love J-Lo. So Uh, I was trying to read all through that. So it sounds like, first of all, either he left her. Mm-hmm. Or he cheated and she left because of that. I didn't. I didn't even get that far. I just. I have a little bit of sympathy for her because I don't know why. I, I always look at the other side of people because everybody else is like she a hoe. She probably did it. She da da da. Um, because I'm not gonna lie. When you go on some of those threads where people are like, "What's your worst celebrity encounter?" Mm-hmm. A lot of people be talking about J Lo, but I don't know her, so I'm not gonna say anything. 
But she could really be like a hopeless romantic that's trying to find love and she's just finding it in the wrong fucking places. Like Ben Affleck. Or people that are just not compatible with her. And when you somebody like a J Lo or Mariah Carey or what, like your your pool might be small. I think people think celebrities' pools are bigger than what they are. No, but that's I think, facts. I think that that's your facts. yeah your your surroundings are like a small group. Yeah, that's facts. And you fact. go with what you know. Like, people that actually can keep up with you, so to speak. Yeah. yeah. So it's not really that much to choose from, and it, you're not really in a lot of places by yourself with regular ass people. Mm-hmm. So why not go to some dick you already know? Okay. Um, so I don't know what she was saying in that, but I mean, I wish her all the best. I don't know. I don't know what else to say that. I wish her the best. I don't know what goes on with her and people be talking about Holly Berry, even though Holly Berry, I think she's been with Van Hunt for a while. Um, but like, I Didn't don't Holly say that Eric Benet's uh, sex addiction was bullshit or something like that recently. Oh, I don't know. I feel I like she said that recently, man. I didn't see that. Anyway, continue. Um, but I don't know what happens with them. But I am not gonna say just because they keep going through men is that they. I don't because there are plenty of men that get married a lot, and they're not nearly as fine as Jennifer Lopez and Holly Berry. That's not fair. They are not. What do you mean? That's not fair. I didn't make them ugly, baby. (laughs) (laughs) People are after them because they got money. I'm saying, like, I don't know. I mean, they could have good personalities. I don't know. But, like, there are men with just as many marriages. Right. So I just, I don't know. I don't know. You know, my J-Lo holds a special place in my heart. My J-Lo, nigga. She's nobody's. She is hers. She need a thruple, son. What's wrong with you? What? What's wrong with you? No, nah, I just feel like she's a lot of women and she just needs, you know, a thruple or something like that. All right. Well, you go, you go work that out with her. I, not, not over here. Why not? You wouldn't want a thruple with J-Lo? I don't want a thruple. I don't with give a J-Lo. fuck who it is. J-Lo. I do not want to deal. With J-Lo? With anybody else's emotions. It's too many. She's I have, not even emotional. But, and she from the Bronx. Obviously, she might be emotional. A little emotional. Yeah, so I don't want to deal with nobody. I'm just, I'm tired. That's why I don't want, I don't even want to have more kids. I'm. T- it's too many people. Oh my gosh. It's fine. You tripping. If J-Lo came in here right now trying to holler at you. Is she taking care of all of us? Then that's different. Yeah. Because I mean, then we will be at peace and I can afford to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> J-Lo bringing the peace? Yeah. Okay. Yes, okay. Gracious. Um, did you hear about the Texas elementary school teacher that, uh, oh, teachers that were oh accused God. of giving students sleep aid stickers? Here's the problem. There's a joke in this. I know there is. Uh-huh. But I, I'm not going to take it like that. I can't. Because they're babies. And I would be pissed if somebody was putting some drugs in my babies that I had no idea what they were. But also, as a parent. Why didn't they bring home the extras? Baby! So we can read the ingredients. (laughs) No. No. No, fuck it. You don't you don't care about it. If that baby alive by the time you get home, baby. Then I could just go ahead and stick that. If we read the ingredients and we find out that it's safe, Uh then we can stick them on the the twins, right? Or the big kids? Both. All right. See, because I understand Baby, the thought process. Right. We can, we're, I think we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was... I think we took the joke as far as it could go. No, I Because this do. is serious. I, I think, understand the thought process of a, wanting to put a baby I, to sleep. I, I think I think it's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I think we I think we took the joke. That's where, that's where it is. Ooh, yeah. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. It was elementary school students too. Have you ever been around elementary school students? Yeah, I told you all them boys do is run. They yes. run all day long. Take this stick, and you know kids love stickers. Oh, they do. Oh my gosh, they, you get a sticker for good, good job. We still taking the joke farther, huh? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think we done. Oh, time for a nap. Yeah, I think I think we done. You I think, sleepy? I think we juiced it. I think we got all the juice <laughs> out of this joke. That we could. I think that's enough. No, nah, I mean, it's fucked up, though. It's fucked up. Don't yeah. give my baby no no shit, man. Not no shit. That, it, it, what's crazy about that is that I had to go to the school to give our daughter a Tylenol. Right. And right. she has to take it in front of the nurse. Yeah. And I'm her parent going to give it to her. So yeah. you think a teacher can just come in there and throw some drugs on my babies? That's crazy. That is crazy without consent. Baby, are you done? Without consent. All right. That's enough.
So <laughs> what about, ha, 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 what about so the teacher hit you up and was like, listen. I'm going to say send me the box. We got melanomen. Melan. Mel- 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 well, you damn sure can't put no melanomen in my baby. <laughs> I don't even know what that is. I know that's real drugs. Melatonin. You uh-huh. got some melatonin stickers. No, you know that can actually fuck up their sleep cycle. If you give them too much melatonin, you give it to them too. Yeah. It's a whole thing. Did I just fuck your mood up? On Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And their brains, too. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we're giving them melatonin to help them out. No, because I'm then I'm going to be mad that they got a nap before they got home. So I know they're going to be wired as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get in this house and be zooming. <laughs> you well-rested motherfucker. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what you doing school today? You had another nap? I'm going I'm to I'm get that teacher. <laughs> I got, I'm gonna have a I'm gonna have a talk with her. Oh man, that's wild <laughs> yeah, though. Nah, and that's it was crazy. more than one teacher. Yeah, all of them. And I wonder how old they were. What the teachers? I feel like because remember I told you teachers teachers are young now. Yeah, no, they were young. And that shit scared. They had to be young. Because I'm not saying older teachers wouldn't do it, but that sounds like a young man's game. Yeah. Because yeah. they probably have I, they. Because where did they even hear about it on TikTok or some shit? Yeah, ain't, ain't, I never no heard these teacher, ain't no teacher these 40 years in. Ain't no teacher 40 years in. I never yeah. heard of sleepy stickers. They're not stickers. looking at TikTok like that. They probably got together and did that. Mm. It was probably one parent that said, I use the same brand. It was at least one parent that said that. Or another teacher on TikTok. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Uh, the Met Gala 2025 theme has been announced. Also, the uh, co-chairs, who are all black men. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's give it up for that Dude, first Do a and round of applause for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do a round. Got Pharrell, yeah. Lewis Hamilton, ASAP Rocky, Coleman Domingo, and LeBron James are all serving as co-chairs to this year's uh, Met Gala or next year's Met Gala 2025, where the theme will be super fine, tailoring black style you know i love how we just take over shit man and black dandies yeah it um yeah i saw the theme and i was like woo and then i saw the co-chairs and i was like nigga yeah nah, oh my this god should be cool even though i don't know who lewis hamilton is he's a race car driver he used to date um nicole scherzinger oh okay um i ain't heard but her he's name a, but he's a race car driver oh she's on mass singer that's right is she is she yeah She's one of the judges up there. Oh, okay. But um, yeah, but he's a race car driver. Okay. But um that Coleman Domingo, listen, that's one of the I I ain't seen nobody that fly in years. LeBron James be fly too, but there's some other I basketball mean, he got players. money to be that fly. He yeah. could somebody else could have done that. Yeah, there's some other basketball players that could have got like that who? first. Um <laughs> well, first and foremost, I go to uh 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 Russell Russell yeah, Wilson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Russell, Russell Wilson. Westbrook. Russell Russell Westbrook. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's the first one I go to because he's just be yeah. on it. Um, Pharrell's style a little weird. But Pharrell Pharrell is a, but he has style and he is it is style at the top with Louis Vuitton right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, I mean, he's always been a, a fashion icon. Yeah, Coleman Domingo be killing it. Coleman Domingo. Every time I see just, him, I'm like, yo, I want that. I don't even understand. Like, I'm like, who the fuck is making these suits? Yeah, like, nah, these, oh my god, it. incredible. He be killing it. Incredible. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about it. Yeah, now nah, that should be. I'm excited tight. to see. It. I was like, I want to go. <laughs> that yeah, that's be... the first thing she said. <laughs> I, I like... looked at her like, what the fuck. <laughs> Where, where do you think we lot. are? I cannot wait to see these pictures. I yeah, cannot nah, they, wait to see white people dressed from black inspiration. Never mind. That was I was gonna say something else right there. I feel like I if, was gonna say something else, but I'm a you know what? Don't worry about it. Okay. I just feel like that would go ultimately wrong. If well, like, that's not what it's about. It's not like yeah. it's not like stick to the theme. Yeah. Super super was it super fine? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Oh, oh man, I was gonna say. Glad something. wasn't super fly though, because that would have been. Oh. Yeah, that could that could have got a lot of Tom Cruise in a seventies pimp suit. That could have got a lot of people. Oh man, uh, just just a whole bunch of black exploitation costumes. Yeah, man, listen. Listen. That's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be here for that as well, though. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, uh, what are we watching? You've been watching the, uh, what is it? The relation? Uh, <laughs> Love, is, Love is, blind. is Blind. There we go. I've been watching Love. 
talk about something else first. I have All to right. talk about um, something else. I watched Power uh the final the final episode Ghost, excuse me, final episode. And um I was I was uh You ever been hungry and then you ate, but you didn't eat a whole lot. You just ate enough to kill a hunger. That's how I felt about the ending. It was like it's cool. I'm satisfied, but it didn't do what I wanted it to do for me. You know what I mean? And this this cliffhanger on, is there going to be another show? That pisses me off, too. Um, I hate that Diane's now going to be the new Mary J because, to me, she doesn't have it in her. Even though it seemed like Mary J didn't have it in her with the... I guess that's why we're doing all of those uh, in the beginning of the season, how they were doing all of those flashbacks to Mary back in the day and how she had to grow to be Mary. Um, but... Uh, I didn't really like that. Um, I, I guess, yeah, it, it was just okay. Like when I think about the way it ended, it was just okay. I wonder if, um, oh my God, I wonder who, uh, who, uh, 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 what's his name was on the phone with at the end because, um, Tyreek was on the phone with at the end because honestly, if the Tommy show was ending, where the hell he going? I already told you they're doing spinoffs. Yeah, they're doing spinoffs, but I think I think he's getting his own. I mean, his like another, like he's ghost now. That's what I think is happening. Well, he I did think say, this was like he did say up. that at the end. You you're like a yeah, ghost. Yeah, I think this was the come up, and then he's now he's ghost. And okay, like it's a whole another thing. And I'm and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I'm definitely okay with that because I like Tyreek. I, I like him. I hated him in uh, when he was younger, but I like him because he's always thinking, man. He's always thinking. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was it was cool. Um, I started watching Starting Five on Netflix. That's the basketball uh, documentary with LeBron James and um, a whole bunch of other dudes. Um, I feel that that was bad, wasn't it? Yeah, a bunch of yeah, dudes. That was, yeah. that was that was kind of crazy. That, that, you that said was my stuff. Anthony Edwards is one of yeah, them. Yeah, Anthony Edwards. Okay. Uh, uh, um, oh, my Jason brain. Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the only people I remember. I walked in, so that's the only people I remember seeing. Sabonis and Butler. Um, oh, that that's the only people I remember. Like, well, I was. Oh, yeah, I you didn't. You didn't see. I didn't yeah, see yeah, all yeah. Of it. You yeah. didn't see them. Um, it's really good. It's a really good documentary, actually. Um, I'm really into it. I think it was so smart of the NBA to put this out right before the beginning of the season because as I'm watching this, it gets me even more hype for the NBA season this year, which I feel like is going to be the best season yet. Um, I'm super excited. I'm even getting league pass this year because I can't miss a game. I cannot miss a game, man. Um, what else? What else? I've been watching the Aaron Hernandez doc. Mm -hmm. And when it, when I first started watching it, it was cool, but now it's not, I don't know, it's not doing it for me. Mm -hmm. it, it's just not doing it for me. And I don't know if it's because we're so used to being able to binge things mm -hmm. that watching it week by week by week, it's not enough meat on the bone each episode. Yeah, it's probably they feel like fillers. It's not enough happening. Yeah, it's like one one main thing will happen each episode, mm -hmm. and the rest of the episode is just like not filler, but it's just it's telling the story, mm -hmm. but it's not enough in each episode to, to be like, like I gotta oh watch the next shit, one. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. So you know, it's throwing me off. Now that's different to me than Fight Night. I finished watching Fight Night today, and. That was another one that came on week by week by mm -hmm. week, um, and I was okay with it. Yeah, it was. I was looking forward to it each each episode, and maybe that's because of the way it ends each episode. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's a little cliffhanger, like oh, what's about to happen now? Yeah. Um, and the acting is a little, hell of a lot better on Fight Night than it is on yeah. the Aaron Hernandez doc. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know how I feel about it, but Fight Night. Definitely a good watch, and now all episodes are out now. Just just binge that shit because it's that good. All right, it's I'm good. I'm, out, I'm on Love Is Blind now. What the fuck did you pull up? I had to pull up the couple so I could know who I was talking about. Okay. Um, I wasn't giving a lot of attention to my reviews, but I'm gonna give a little tiny bit of attention just from if you've why if you have not watched all the rest of the episodes, then skip this. Um, because I'm just gonna go through a really quick like overview of whatever. So, um. 
the couples. I'm, I think I'm just going to try to. All right. So Taylor and Garrett, first of all, I think that they are a gorgeous couple together. I think that Taylor is like so pretty. She was so concerned that he was going to be worried about her being Asian. But like they seem like they made it through it. They seem like the couple to me that is like the most guaranteed to get married. Like I really, really like them. I think they're super compatible. Blah, 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 blah whatever. Um, Ashley and Tyler. So again, if you have not heard seen it, then skip past this. So in the last episode before the new episodes come back out, um, first of all, I always I thought they were super cute. I, I'm like guaranteed to get married. They're adorable. Um they find out that Tyler has fathered, um, he's been a sperm, sperm dad, basically, to a couple that was not, that was having a hard time having kids or couldn't have kids or something like that. Mm -hmm. So he has three kids, but they're not his kids. It's sperm that he donated. He got paid for that? Um, I don't know. They didn't go into all that, but he didn't tell her until like, they've been out of the pods now living together and he tells her. Or she finds out whatever happens. They never go into detail that he basically has three kids and it's someone that he knows so he can see these kids. Okay. But he's not their father. He, no, so he doesn't have dad. any rights. But he is. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that it, that's bothering her. That's like a, um, it's, it's something that's kind of getting to her because they've been talking about having kids, all this other stuff. Would that bother you? And then she finds out about the kids. That's why I brought it up because I was wondering how what you thought about that. I I feel bad. I'm like, I don't know if this is Love is Blind trying to make this um, an issue when she probably doesn't care about it or if she really cares about it. Oh. Because if they're not his children, I think that's unfair to punish him like he just was hiding these kids that were his. Right. I think that if he's helping another couple out and he has three children, I think that's... Uh, commendable. I don't think that's something to be like, oh, I don't know if I feel good about this because you didn't tell me you had three kids if they are not his kids. Yeah, I mean, well, wait, he didn't tell her? Apparently he didn't tell her until they got out of the pods and like met each other and they're like living together before the wedding. So maybe he wanted them to get to know him first and didn't want to be judged by that. I don't know. This is how the last episode was ending. This is how we go into the next one. <sighs> See, I don't. So I know personally, mm -hmm. I wouldn't give a fuck. Like honestly, yeah. it, you, if you if you had you know did whatever hell some babies like for was somebody, a surrogate, yeah. yeah, yeah, I wouldn't give a fuck. Like those, I ain't got to worry about them kids. Well, I think a lot of the times with surrogates, and and if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. I don't I don't know. I've never been through this, but I think that you can implant both of the other partners inside of you, and you just carry them. Oh, okay. That's well, what I think. Well, I mean, for a dude, I don't, you know, it, it is what it is. It's like, okay, I, I gave you some sperm, you know, go have fun. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like, don't think I would care. And if he's done everything else right, and this is another thing that he really, honestly, was doing the right thing and helping somebody. Right. Well, I think that's the only part where it could get kind of dicey because I don't know if everyone feels like, you know, that's a moral thing that you should do. Yeah. So I un I I only understand her being upset if it's because you didn't tell me sooner. Yeah. Because that might have went against my moral code. Yeah. You know what I'm it saying? It might have been something. She was like, you should have told me this before I even said I do. Right. Which I understand, but also I'm like, it's a lot to take in, but it's all like he didn't uh, if they don't see him as their dad, if they don't even know. But still, it's it's not, I don't think even think it the only way I will understand what she's talk what she's saying is if it's not about that. Mm -hmm. If it's literally about morally, I don't believe in that. Yeah. Then, you know, I get it. Like, tell me that first. So I, I understand that gripe. But as far as it actually being a situation that would affect the relationship, no. Yeah. No, not at all. Um so uh, I guess we're waiting to hear what happens with that. Then there's Hannah and Nick. Um, I think Nick went in as like the playboy that everybody was like, oh, he's a smooth talker. He's whatever. Uh, again, they don't see each other. It's from the way he was talking to pot. So they all had a bad taste in their mouth from the way he was as a person. Mm -hmm. He picked this girl, Hannah. She's 26. I think she's the youngest one on the cast. Um, and I think she just kind of, I think... Um, I'm seeing that he actually is a really nice person that really wanted to find love. And I think she's kind of immature a little bit from the show. It seems like now he's immature. 
I don't know, immature. Because this kind of goes back to us talking about why are you building with somebody over 40? He's not over 40. He's young. Mm -hmm. But like, so this guy, I guess he played football for years, like all American, all this other stuff. Um, and then stopped playing football, came back home, and he's a realtor now, but he lives in his parents' basement. Mm. Um, but it's like, you know, like an apartment, mm -hmm. but his parents' basement. And apparently his parents also pay his phone bill, mm -hmm. but he takes care of, you know, his other stuff. And he was like, she's mad that he's not more established than what he is and that he lives with his parents. And that his parents pay his phone bill. And he was like, well, I mean, if they offering to pay my phone bill, I'm not going to stop them. Goddamn right. So what did <laughs> she's just going in there having all these expectations of who he should be and he's trying to do things and she's just like, why are you not? It ain't gonna work. Why are you not this person? It like ain't gonna work. she's she's been on her own since she was 18. So she's like her, Oh, that's really not yeah, her work. parents cut her off so at 18. So she's like, You should be doing all of these things. Yeah. And they're two different people. Yeah. And she judges him every second. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Um Cause at first I was like, maybe they'll get to know each other and stuff like that. But like her parents, he met his, he met her parents and her parents were kind of also like, no, you're a little bit of a bitch. Like you mm -hmm. are a little bit of a bitch. Her brother came and met him and her brother was like, yeah, that's stuff I don't like about her either. And the guy is like trying, <laughs> he's like trying as hard as to like do whatever she needs. And she's breaking him down every five seconds. So, uh, I'm gonna see what happens with that, but I don't feel like they get married. Monica and Steven. So apparently, Steven is the dude that found out he was like, what, like 15% black or some shit like that. Um, but they seem like they were compatible, whatever. So on the we leave the last episode with Steven. I guess he went in for a sleep test, which she's like not even sure if he really went in for a sleep test. But the day before and the day of the sleep test or whatever, he was texting this girl somebody that he knew talking about the things that he wanted to do to her. They were like sexting back and forth, mm -hmm. I think. Or he met her on like a chat line. It was something like this because they never really explained it. And he's talking about all this nasty shit that he wanted to do to her and whatever else. But mind you, most of the time that they show Steven, he's talking about sex. He's talking about being horny. He's talking about doing something so he could get fucked. He's talking about all this stuff. So they kind of paint him like this sex crazed guy. Mm -hmm. And then this shit happens. And uh, he, I mean, doesn't really explain himself to get out of it. He's just like, I'm just going to leave you alone and whatever. And she's like heartbroken by it. So I feel terrible about her, but I don't know if he's going to come back in the picture. I don't know. Alexandra and Tim, and I'm going to get through this real, real quick. Alexandra and Tim, Tim, I guess is the dude that went to Norfolk State. Oh, hey, listen. Behold. Uh, anyway. Behold. And I fuck with him. <laughs> you just come to that? I fuck this with him. The show. You fuck <laughs> he seems like a really good person, and as she seems like a good person too, but she also seems very bossy. And I don't know how that's gonna go, but whatever. Um, Marissa and Ramses, they had an argument argument about how she was in the military. He's from Venezuela, and he don't really and like if she were to get back in the military and reserves, he wouldn't be with her because he doesn't agree with them going to fight these other countries because he's been on the other side of it and all mm -hmm. sorts of shit. So they, that's been their biggest argument about that. And then her mama is kind of... I don't want to say her mama a bitch. I don't want to disrespect her mama, but her mama is kind of coming in with bitch energy, if that means anything. Mm -hmm. Like, very much like, I guess there's not a dad in the house, so she's... Um, that, th and this is from her words. Her mother tries to overcompensate for there not being a father figure or something. And she was coming there like, she getting a prenup, I don't like you, I like, and she said, I don't think that this is another question that I wanted to present to you. And I know I get go through these really fast. I'm 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 done now. Cause I think I went through everybody I want to go through. But she said, You're getting a prenup because I don't think that marriage is forever. I think you do marriage about 10, 15 years, and you do it and it's cool, and then you end it, and then I want her to still come out with her money at the end of the day. Hmm. Like, like her final everything is like marriage is not forever at all. Like, I don't believe in that at all. I barely believe in love. I think all her kids got different daddies, and I think she got, like, four kids. Um, but she said it's not forever at all, so you have to get a prenup because she's got to come. She's Because her daughter's going to law school, was in the military, all those. That's stuff. interesting. It it was, but it's also, like, unfair. Like, she was, he was like, do you have our blessing? He was like, well, you don't have my blessing. I don't know you, and I don't think marriage is forever anyway. Like, 
she 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 sound she sound like she hurt. Yeah. But that's an interesting thought though. Marriage not being forever, just marrying for a certain amount of time. Yeah, she said she I thinks it's that. good for a little bit, but it's not forever at all. Like there's no story where it would be forever in her mind. I I can see that. You do you believe that too? I don't believe it, but I can see a world where that works. Mm -hmm. Like I can see a I could see a life where I lived by that motto. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. You know, yeah. and shit, 15 years might be too long. 10, little, little 10 drop. Little 10 drop. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's honest. I appreciate that. Yeah. Not, not you, boo. No, it's fine. You don't have to reassure me. I'm, I'm okay. Um, but what I did say, and I think I'm correcting what I said last week, this this is this this season has the most black couples I've ever seen. Hmm. At first, everybody was looking at the cast list saying it's not enough black folks, but the couples that they have picked mm -hmm. is the most black folks I've ever seen on Love Is Blind. Okay. Um. So, you know, there's that. But um. Yeah, I think I think that's it. I think that's my Love Is Blind review. My bad, y'all. I got thoughts, but I'm gonna wait until the you know the um. Finale, I think, is the next time that they show stuff. The weddings are and the weddings and then the reunion, but okay. Cool. Yeah. So um gotta gotta say uh rest in peace to uh Sissy uh Sissy Houston. Houston. Yeah, you know I mean Sissy Houston. Uh, mother of Whitney Houston, but she was a legend in her own right, mm -hmm. a Grammy Award winning singer. Um I think she was ninety two when she passed. I'm not sure how old she was, but I think she was about ninety two. Yeah, so rest um, in peace to her. Rest in peace to her. Um. Also, we forgot the Kimbe Mutombo. Ah, uh, yeah, we last forgot. Week. That's who we forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was Thanks somebody we was trying us. to remember, and it was the Kimbe Mutombo. So thank y'all for that. Um, and that's about it, man. We gotta go get our kids. Uh, even though, man, this was not the episode I expected this week. What did you think it was gonna be this week? A little bit more, you know, jovial. Yeah. You started talking about heaven, and then it went downhill from No, there. it didn't. It wasn't heaven. Yeah. It wasn't heaven's yeah, fault. Yeah, you started with heaven, and then it just went. I don't think it was heaven's fault. <sighs> it's all right. We'll do Patreon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do Patreon. Yeah, it'll be a little bit more happen. fun. But I hope you enjoyed it, though. Yeah, it wasn't a bad I, episode. I hope you enjoyed just, the episode. It was just different. Yeah, you know, it just be, boy, I tell you. Um, anyway, <laughs> anything you want to say, get those tickets. Get those tickets, man. I'm excited. And if you know food places, DM me with the food places for yes. Oklahoma and for uh, Vegas. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Yeah, I got nothing else. Yeah, that's it. It's fine. All right. So with that being said, and then we had sex and so should you. Thanks for listening. Bye.